Okay, I think we should be live. Let me know if you can hear and see everything okay. We're going to be doing some 3090 overclocking today, including the uh, reference card with liquid nitrogen. Actually, I'm not really going to be overclocking this one as much as I am just determining the frequency behavior of the card. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's not part of the, the Rip J challenge or anything. That's just for separate research. So we'll talk about that in a bit, and then we'll do some overclocking on the, um, the FTW3 3090 on air. So let's see what, uh, what's chat saying? Looks fine, can hear fine. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay, let me tweet this out and then we'll get going. So yeah, we're gonna be doing some 3090 work today. Let's see, uh, we are live with the RTX 3090s and some overclocking uh, stream. All right, cool. Yeah, so uh, like I said, plan today is to work on the 3090s. The couple of things uh, specifically, people are asking about like me to talk about the capacitor thing that Igor and Jay have been talking about. I haven't looked into it yet. Uh, I've been slammed with reviewing stuff, so I haven't. I don't really have a count yet because I haven't looked into the capacitor stuff. Um, are you restocking the wireframe mouse pad? Yes, actually. Uh, so I just had our our um, warehouse guy go through the inventory and get a count on it. We've got a couple more that we added, we added in stock. Uh, the next big shipment is a little ways out, but not too far. But there are some in there right now that are on the store already that are in stock and shipping. Um, not a huge amount, but enough to probably probably get through the stream. We'll see. Um, no, I have not watched the, the videos on the capacitor stuff. Uh, so I, I do know a little bit about it, but I'm going to keep my mouth shut until I can do more research because I don't want to put bad information out there. So, uh, like, I, I know a little bit. I've spoken to some partners, but I haven't read Igor's content, and um, I'm not really sure what exactly is true and what's not, so I'm not going to say anything right now. We'll look into that later, though, uh, but not this, we this weekend because we've already got a bunch of stuff lined up. All right, so what I want to do is use some liquid nitrogen to test the, how the 3090 behaves at different frequencies. This is really useful because what we can do is specifically control the GPU temperature such that uh, it's not like liquid nitrogen just automatically makes it uh, extreme and unattainable levels of cooling. It, it depends on how much we pour in there. So my plan is to pour in amounts so that we, ha we can say start at maybe 80 degrees Celsius, and then we'll step down to like 75, 70, 60, and I want to look at how much the frequency is changing. Okay. <laughs> how much the frequency is changing. Uh, at each increment of temperature, and that'll allow us to see like how much your normal cooling matters. So even though we're using Allen 2 to do this experiment, to do this research, uh, in reality what you can take away is if you have a cooler that is five degrees lower than the next one, which is definitely possible on air between all the cards out there, actually with the FE versus like the Gigabyte Eagle, it's 10 degree difference noise normalized. Or if you have water, you might be talking 10, 15 degrees cooler, maybe 20 if you're going from a Founders Edition. Uh, so this will help us show that, that sense of extra frequency you get just out of the boosting behavior alone. Uh, so there's a, a lot of questions about AIB cards, capacitors, stuff like that. Um, so AIB cards are working on reviews of the 3080s, just shot. The first one, actually, that's that's almost done being edited. That'll go up in the next week or so. Uh, so we're working on those. Um, okay. So when are you going to activate channel memberships? No current plans. Patreon is enough to keep up with as is. Uh, I need to put a a thermal couple on here. Actually, I forgot to put one into the LN2 pot when I assembled this. So we're just going to go ahead and do that live. So it has to be done anyway. And then we'll move on to the air cooled card overclocking after that. But this is what I'm most interested with starting on. So let's, um, we're going to have to take this off. This is insulation. This is a Founders Edition card. I'm going to keep an eye on uh, Super Chats, but I'm going to be reading them on about a, probably about a 30 to 60 minute delay. And all this stuff on the board is just Vaseline for insulation because it's going to get cold. Uh, so that's helpful for that later. Uh, no, Joe, Joe went back home. Joe doesn't live nearby. So uh, Joe's back home. He wants to do some 3090 stuff soon once he gets it. Okay. 
Yes, I, someone in chat saying he knows about the capacitor theory. Stop asking. Yeah, like I said, I've heard of it, a couple thoughts, but I don't have anything to publish yet because, you know, I, I try not to talk about things until I've studied them, and that's uh, some of the others have looked into it, but I have not had time really to go um, look into it as much as I'd like, so probably just stick with what other people have said for now, and we'll look into it when we get a chance. I know that one of the main issues, though, is um, there's a vacuum outside. One of the main issues is the uh, frequency boosting over 2,000 megahertz in some applications like Heaven, but um, yeah, that's something we'll talk about later. So I need to put um, thermocouple in the liquid nitrogen pot, and we're going to need some, uh, I guess I have a tube, some thermal paste for that. So I've got Vaseline everywhere from this card now. Vaseline is to insulate. Actually, we need a screwdriver also. Um, does this fit that screw? No. Did you watch Jay's video? No. I don't. <laughs> I'm like busy making our own every day. I don't have infinite. I don't keep up with them daily. It takes me a while to get to that stuff. Uh, I just shot like two or three videos in the last 12 hours. Okay. So this is the bracket for the 30 series. Uh, like I said, we're going to get to some air cooled overclocking on the FTW3 in a bit, which is also on the table to my right. Uh, and then we're going to start with this one for frequency scale. Okay. Um, so I need to clean that off anyway. Might as well do that right now. And then after that, we will do the um, thermocouple installation, which goes in underneath the bracket so that it can stay in securely. And, uh, and we're going to put some more thermal paste in for the chamber where the, um, the thermocouple goes. So let me clean off the card. This is the FE, if not obvious already from the sort of like <laughs> fractured looking design. That uh, is intentional, but it uh, is definitely a unique approach to design. In our review that's coming up of one of the partner models for the 3080s, we show how the partner cards are still advantaged in several ways over FE. Despite improvements generationally, NVIDIA is still behind where partners are, but that's not too surprising. They've gotten a lot better, but they're still not yet the best. Somewhat far from it, depending on what benchmarks. Okay. So uh, thermocouple holes over here. What I'm going to do is get some paste. I've seen some comments about the capacitor stuff. I think some people, some have really taken away the wrong thing uh, from this story. But uh, OK. So we're going to go with some paste right there. This just obviously, as paste always does, helps conduct. So. The real goal here is to make sure that the reading from the thermocouple is accurate as much as it can be to the Allen 2 pot. So I'll go in there. And now we can put the bracket back on, which has a specific installation. I don't think I can really cover that rubber band like I'd like to. Yeah. Maybe that will work. I think that uh, I don't really want to run that rubber band against the GPU, so let's put that underneath. Um, okay, I'm not going to answer the question about capacitors anymore because I've answered it like four times now. <laughs> so you can rewind on the the DVR if you want to see that. All right. Have you heard anything interesting from AMD lately? No, not anything that's that's like useful in terms of product. Uh, I don't actually know any more than any of you do right now. Not much more anyway, a little bit, but um, most of it is not product level stuff. It's more like supply level stuff. So no, I don't know too much about what AMD's got going on at the moment. 
These you don't want to over tighten. I have snapped screws in here before, specifically this top left one. So always be careful not to go too tight. Okay. All right, so uh, got to clean that off and now we can get some KP paste on there. So today we're using KPX. I o oscillate between this and Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut for anything LNT related. And I'll start looking at the super chats in a bit. Uh, if you want to pick up the shirt that I am wearing, they are on store.gamersnexus.net. We're expecting to run out of quantity in probably about the next seven days or so, if not sooner. And um, all of that, obviously, like everything else, goes straight back into funding the testing and the work we do here. But if you want a cool shirt for one million subs, it is on the store. Okay, we should be good here. So now, I'm gonna put the card back on. Getting a good mount on this is really important. Um, it helps to sort of take turns tightening the screws. Let's drop that down like that. I'm gonna press on it just a little bit to get some sticking and then we will tighten the screws back on. Let's see. Uh, I think someone asked about windows. I didn't catch the whole question, but if it helps, um, I think the question was about stripping windows down. I'm not sure if I read it fast enough before it scrolled up. Uh, I did some custom work on, on windows for this particular build. It's pretty stripped down and I've got a lot of services disabled, stuff like that, to help with overclocking performance, but uh, we are not going to get a super competitive score today, because I'm the real overclock effort I'm going to be doing is on the FTW3 with air, and then this one is, uh, is just going to be like for frequency research, stuff I need to do anyway, I figured I'd do it on the stream. Let's see if that's... Good way to check the mount quality is to get eye level with it and look through to see if the gaps on the sides of the die are even or if you have a gap where the die is and we're good there. So now I just need to put this insulation back on. Should probably put some more vests on there. But I'm just gonna, oh, that's kind of dry. Let's do a little more. This brush is not particularly useful at this point. Okay, so this again is uh, insulation. Helps protect against uh, once the condensation dries, or once the condensation dries, once the condensation thaws, and um, helps uh, any water droplets that run off should not be touching anything that'll cause a short. I don't typically kill a card from a short, but it's possible. I normally just have a worse time overclocking. Okay, someone asked, is the paste worth overclocking? They're worth, God, man, I'm, I'm like misspeaking a lot right now. Is the paste worth overclocking? Yes, overclock your thermal paste. Is the paste worth replacing uh, for an overclock was the question. I think it is for an overclock. For like stock performance, I'm not super worried about the thermal paste that's on cards, but over time, it will definitely age worse than a lot of the aftermarket paste out there. Um, you could replace it later or earlier. It doesn't particularly matter, but at some point later down the line, especially if you buy a card used, it might be worth replacing it. For overclocking, for liquid nitrogen especially, it's worth, it's absolutely, you should replace it uh, because I mean, obviously you're doing it anyway because you're taking the board apart, but you should replace it with LN2 specifically because of the, um, the fact that you're going to be dealing with low temperatures that can cause the paste to crack. Where'd that get? Can you grab wherever that is for me? So I'm going to plug this into a thermo, thank you, thermocouple reader. And we'll try and put that on the right side so it's visible during benchmarking today. Although, might not be able to get it, but we'll try. Well, maybe over here. Nope, let's do that for now. 
Okay, so, uh, yeah, we're gonna do the L and T stuff first for frequency research, like I said, if you're just tuning in. So specifically the goal here is to determine how the card behaves with, with temperatures from 80 degrees down to negatives. Uh, this will be extrapolated. You can extrapolate this to, to liquid coolers, to, um, uh, let's see, water coolers, chilled, anything, because the liquid nitrogen itself doesn't matter. It's the temperature of the GPU that matters. So that's what we're going to be showing. Let's get this over here. And I need a mouse and keyboard. So we're going to show off the frequency scale, and that will help you understand uh, outside of whatever other benefits, like noise, for example, you might get from water cooling or from a better air cooler. Are there any frequency or performance in terms of gaming benefits that you can gain? If you don't know, if you're not aware, GPU Boost will boost the clocks based on the temperature. And uh, that's why our goal is to determine the extent of that boosting today. I don't know if they're on 5.0 yet, or if they're still on GPU Boost 4.0, but. Oh. USB, okay. Wow, that might be a world record for plugging in USB blind. Two for two is pretty good. All right, Let's see if we can boot. This, this I don't think I can do blind. I might need your help on that one. <laughs> okay, I give up. Maybe Andrew can do it. Uh, let me get some super chats while Andrew gets that for me. Okay, viewer activity. So, uh, Philip Zeiser said, hi, Steve. Hi. Absolute said, what are your thoughts on AIB cards cheaping out on capacitors causing numerous issues with new GPUs? said this already, but I haven't fully looked into it yet, so I don't have any thoughts on it. I try not to talk about that stuff until I actually read into it, because someone's going to be like, oh, shade at Jay. No, Jay, Jay read about it. I haven't. That's the difference. So, uh, can, uh, Daniel Silva says, congrats on 1 million. Good luck with the 3090. Thank you. Uh, let's see. John Macy, message retracted. Uh, Fru Signu 2011 said, Hey, Steve, I switched to an IT career because of your channel. I hear the overclocking, 3090 overclock on an air yield, 7% gains from stock. Is it true? We'll find out tonight. And uh, uh, IT career, I'd be, I w IT is such a, a wide net to cast, but I wish you luck in whatever aspect it is. It's, uh, I think it's a good industry to be in. It's pretty, pretty stable in growth, especially, well, actually, right now it's going up in growth because of the uh, work from home stuff. People. <laughs> You've, suddenly you've got people who've never done really much of online anything before having to use it for uh, daily tasks. So, so it's a good time to switch. Okay, let's see. I think we should be able to boot. So this card is interesting for its layout. The VRM is really close to the GPU. <laughs> I'm hoping that, nice, that's a, that's a high RPM fan. I'm hoping that because it's so so close to the GPU, the liquid nitrogen helps us a little bit with the cooling. So I don't have to have these fans here, hopefully. But we'll see how it goes. That's just for the VRM mostly. Sound like a bandsaw or something. Uh, so yeah, this is not going to be for a record setting score, this setup. Oh, we're missing the power cable on this monitor. It's uh, like a power brick plugged into the power strip down there. And it should be a barrel plug if you can grab that. I'm going to fill up some LN2 while we get the monitor plugged in. So yeah, uh, LN2 stuff is going to be for frequency. I keep saying this, but we have a lot of people still joining. I'll, I'll stop saying it once it's kind of full. Um, and the actual overclock is going to be on the EVGA FTW3. What is this? OK. So let me rotate this. Is there anything? Although we should be able to, even just on air, I think, beat our scores we set with Joe previously. Um, but uh, officially, I'm not going to be uh, posting a score past Jay's right now because he was on chilled intake with an air conditioner. And I was on, I'm going to be on um, 
just the air cooler ambient. So this will be for the frequency testing. Should be pretty good use, useful information. Uh, liquid nitrogen I look at as a tool a lot of the time for determining performance and behavior. Um, okay, so how do we want to start? I guess launch GPU-Z, we'll launch 3D Mark, and what I'm going to do is freeze a 3D, a 3D Mark frame and look at GPU-Z's frequency. Uh, one sec, I'll be right back. And then we'll be able to determine the frequency performance versus cold. Okay. So temperature currently is what? 36 degrees Celsius. There's no liquid nitrogen in there right now. We've done this before. We did this for the Radeon stuff. Or actually, no, for Ryzen. Uh, 3950X, 3900X. This was very useful to see how Precision Boost 2 behaves. <laughs> I see 10. Tin's in chat. Tin says, no lame gloves, people. Relax. Good to see you, Tin. OK. So yeah, um, this will be interesting, because uh, I'm not really sure exactly how much boosting you get from every couple degrees on this generation. It should be similar to Turing. But uh, we didn't do this testing as thoroughly as we're going to do it right now. So this is stuff I need to know anyway for a video. And we'll just figure it out. What I'm going to do is let this get to a frame. I'm going to freeze it. And then we'll just look at frequency. And hopefully I don't need a looping benchmark to do that. You'll get a more varied load. Frequency is more all over the place. It's harder to read. And uh, boost lock doesn't work yet on these cards. So OK. Let me get some LN2 in there so it doesn't overheat. And then I'll start explaining what's going on. Just a little bit to make sure there's no issues. Uh, Okay, so down to pot temperature. I don't really know how to position this where it's viewable for everybody. Maybe like that. I need like a brick to hold it in place. So now we can see what kind of scale there is. Might need another brick. GN glass cubes coming in handy once again. All right, so super chats I'll get to momentarily. Did you do, uh, I'm one crazy cow says, did you do any shunt mods on this card yet? No, this is all stock. And this is going to be some hopefully useful information uh, for actual use outside of the, the liquid nitrogen stuff. So you can see here we have a very flat frequency. That's good. That's what I want because uh, we are just trying to see the how much it scales. It would be great if I could get this. Okay. So let's just save this here. I'm going to save a frequency log as we go. Uh, okay, so we're at like 1905, 1920 megahertz, super flat. With a game, you'll see this much spikier. Some of that's contingent on CPU load. Some of it is uh, based on the game load or the thermals. Right now, we're at 73 degrees Celsius. This is completely achievable and normal on an air cooler. So with this specific card, with this specific power limit, this is the behavior you're getting. It's like 1905, 1920 somewhere in there for frequency. And it's going to drop as temperature rises, which you can actually see now. I need to pour a little more in because I don't want it to get, I don't want it to run away from me. So we're going to try and keep it above TJ Matt or below TJ Max. And, um, and then take some readings. That actually, I plunged the temperature super fast with that. So the GPU temperature on the screen is about 50 and dropping. So that, that was a big plunge. I didn't want to drop that fast. Uh, it looks like the GPU, actually, we may have hit a, um, a thermal throttle point, too, when it was rising. So let's give it a second to recover here. OK. And the question is going to be, if we keep it at about, let's, let's target. We were at 74 a second ago. It was 1905, 1920 something. Let's target like 65 and see uh, what kind of frequency change we get. 65, so we're at 1935, 1920. 
So it's gone up 15 to 25 megahertz, depending on where you draw the line. We're getting some fluctuation here as the, the load cycles, but this is normal. Uh, GPU temperature is dropping very fast once again. So let's give this a second to kind of rebound. That's because of the frequency drop, that the temperature drop, not because of the three drops of LN2 I put in there. Give it a second to rebound, and I love Windows. This is such a good feature. It makes so much sense. Okay. <laughs> uh, so 65, we're at like, yeah, so a couple megahertz higher. Let's bring it down to, let's try like 55 or something. I think I'm going to have a hard time getting it to 60. Let's try, I'm going to bring it down a little bit lower than that. And then we'll um, and we'll check it out. So 67, 66, need a little more. Frequency dropped, which makes it difficult to control. Let's see. I'm just going to wake it up. So it should boost back up from that. So what we're looking for is once this thing... Once boost decides to behave and wake back up. Actually, the memory might be running a little hot. Let me bring this down really cold and then back up just to help the memory out. I didn't really, I've forgotten the uh, memory thermals are definitely an issue, which is what we're running into right now. It's actually throttling. If we look at GPUZ, this is a, a useful demo too. So my mistake, but uh, I wasn't taking into account memory thermals, because we don't have a heat sink on them, just some direct airflow. but. Uh, you can see this purple, that's a thermal limit, whereas green is a power limit. And so, and VREL is voltage reliability. So thermal was happening not because of GPU temperature, which was completely fine, but because of the memory temperature, um, we were getting some clock issues, which they didn't use to control on memory, but I'm pretty positive they do this time. Okay, so now it's getting really cold. That solved our thermal issue. Hopefully that brings the memory down enough to do some testing. And uh, in the very least, we can get a frequency readout for this temperature. Uh, Tin says, need more expensive capacitors, not cheap crap ones. Tin uh, used to work for EVGA, if you didn't know. Worked on the kingpin cards and some other stuff. All right, so at 30 degrees Celsius, for what that's worth, the GPU is doing about 2010 megahertz. So 1995, 2010, some fluctuation as always, but let's, let's kind of round and call it 95 to 2000. Uh, sets out about 30C. Almost every setup's gonna run warmer than that, uh, unless you're chilled. And so we're gonna let the temperature rise a little bit. I would say 45, 50 isn't totally impossible with a good liquid cooling setup, so we'll let it rise to there. I'm gonna take some notes. So approximately 30C is approximately 95 to 2000 megahertz upper range, a little higher, and then we'll write down uh, like 45 to 50 or something like that. Let's see, let me take, actually we've got another, so 37, now we're at 1980. So you can already see the effect of what I'm talking about. So 980 to 95 now instead of 95 to 2010. Uh, and that's in the 40 range. So let's call that 37 to 40 is about 1980 to 95 megahertz. That's useful to know. And we're about to hit 45. So you can see it's starting to dip to 65 to 80. We no longer have this weird frequency bouncing behavior because the memory is cold enough at this point, for now anyway. And uh, so 65 to 80 is what we're seeing at 45 range. But it's still peaking at 80. It's just the peaks are lower. Now you see we're dropping to 50 as temperature goes up to 48. So I'm going to write down 45 was about 80, uh, 65 to 80. And then we're going to write down 50 what that is. 50 is about 1950 megahertz, pretty even right now. We'll eventually drop, so let's write down 50C is about 1950 megahertz. Uh, so again, if you're kind of just joining, this is a frequency versus temperature plot for the RTX 3090. And the objective of this is to determine by using liquid nitrogen as a tool rather than an extreme overclocking utility, we're determining how your cooling solution will impact your frequency fully stock, no adjustments made by the user. This is useful to know uh, for the RIP-J thing we'll eventually we'll be getting into soon. And uh, now I think we're starting to hit therm again, so memory is running too hot. I don't really have a great solution for that. I could pour LN2 onto the card, but that's going to cause other issues. Let's bring it down a lot, and then we'll bring it back up. So 
the goal is just going to be cool the memory really fast and let the core get warm again. And the memory is cooling by the uh, just through the board. I need some more liquid nitrogen. U using uh, Linus's water bottle for this. He's got the WAN show, I think, going tonight. I'd forgotten about that. We were just texting before he went live, though. Let's bring it down some more. Oop, a bunch of that went onto the paper towel. But that's why it's there. Okay. Are you getting your hands on a Strix? I don't know. They're so limited on quantity. Uh, so I'm going to try for sure, but, but you know, quantity's low for purchase, so. Also Strix, I don't know that they really have many yet. No, Roman has one. All right, so yeah, we're dropping temperature. Going to bring the memory down. I'll bring the GPU back up, and then we'll be able to test. We've already got down to 50 degrees Celsius. So, so far, we have seen a scale. I'll get to the Super Chats in a moment while this moves around. Uh, no, I don't. No, someone says turn the fans around. No, that's, that's not. I have them set up a specific way. Um, so scale so far at 30 degrees Celsius, we're seeing 1995 to 2000 megahertz. And uh, 37 to 40 degrees Celsius, we were at 1980 to 1995 megahertz. So you've got a little bit of a change there. As we increase into water cooling temperatures, at 45, we were plotting about a 1965 to 1980 megahertz. So for perspective, down at 30, which if you lived in like, uh, <laughs> I don't know, if you lived in a, a, an industrial freezer, then I guess you could run at those lower temperatures. But at 30 C though, uh, versus 45, it's 15 degrees. You're talking a change of like 35 to 20 megahertz at the, the upper end of the lower end. At 50 degrees Celsius, it's 1950 megahertz. So you got a 50 megahertz range there from only temperature alone with a difference of about 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then at the end of this, what I'm gonna do is take this file and plot everything. So we're at 22 here, and you can see we're at 2025 megahertz. So that's gonna establish our new low end range for temperature, 2040 at the peak. I'll write down 25 to 2040, and that's at 20 degrees to 25 degrees. So let's write down 20 to 25 was about 2025 megahertz to 2040 megahertz. Chicago in the winter, someone says. Yes, that is also accurate. Yeah, set your system up in your garage, I guess, and, and then you'd be able to run those temperatures. Uh, okay, so I want it to get up to like, what are we missing? We're missing 55 degrees and we're missing 60 degrees. And we should have 70s and that stuff logged already from our normal testing with the air coolers. So let me grab a torch. Actually, what's it running right now? 37. Let me grab a torch to speed this up. So 40. I'm going to just uh, heat it up a little bit. Let's run that up to about, what did I say? 55 is what I want to see. Hopefully we can get there without the memory overheating again. It's 45 right now trying to heat specifically the GPU area, although it's all conductive anyway, so. That's 50, so we want to get up to a little bit more. Let's, I'm just gonna wait at this point, it's pretty close to where I want it to be. Not hitting thermal limit yet. So waiting on 55, three more degrees, and then we're gonna go for reading 60 and see what that frequency is. Currently we're seeing about a 50 megahertz range from the cold to the sort of normal usage for water, that is. Uh, air we've already got plotted. I think that was like uh, 1930, I wanna say, 1935 in the review. So 65 at 60 degrees, 1965 megahertz, 1935. So we're gonna call that 35 to 60-ish at 60. Okay. And uh, it's 65, so we'll plot that too. See if it changes much. That was just kind of a chance drop. Okay, so 20 to 35 now. Oh, 1875. I think we're going to hit therm again. Yes. Well, okay, we're good there. So I got about what I wanted, which is at around, what was that? Uh, it was like 60 something. 65, 70. We're seeing like a 1920 to 1935 megahertz range. Cool. That is going to be really useful information for a video. Okay. So I'm going to bring this down just so the memory's not mad at us. And 
Uh, then we will, I don't know, maybe just run a Port Royal once or something, but I, I should, probably shouldn't. I don't want to do a, a air cold for that today. Let's see. What can we do that's interesting? Stop the log so we don't lose it if it crashes. Uh, kind of curious about Quake. RTX and 8K gaming. That might be fun for a second. Because it's definitely possible to play 8K games, as we all know, on the 3090. So let's just go ahead and do that. I don't know what's actually stable on this thing yet. I'm going to use a different benchmark than the one Jay and I are going to be using. Jay and I will be competing in Port Royal. I'm going to use Time Spy Extreme and just figure out where this card behaves. And then we'll, we'll run Quake and I'll pull it off and we'll do the EVGA stuff. Okay. So we're going to pull this down. It's working quick, this Allen 2 pot. Like, can we get a shot for uh, people down there? So, you'll be able to see how it, um, how quickly it boils. We're going to get a shot down on the Allen 2 pot. Thank you. You can see how fast that's boiling. Pretty quick. Good, good contact on that. Good heat transfer. This GPU is at 16 degrees right now. Okay, so let me do some clock changes. I'll run Quake for fun. Oh, is there a 500? Someone said. I'll get it. Uh, wow. Okay, so Stovenism. Uh, $500. That is, that is way too much. We appreciate it, but, uh, thank you. Uh, we, we appreciate it. That's, uh, I'll, I'll quote Paul once again. Paul's always been inspiring for these. I don't know what to say when it's that amount of money. Paul once said, I hope you're independently wealthy. Uh, thank you. So let me read this. Stovenism says, hi, Steve, ever thought, ever thermal test a P600 and ever thought of adding to Patreon 50 or $100 options. Thank you for your content. Uh, take the team out on me. We will do that. Um, Patreon, I have not thought about adding higher options. We can look into it. One of the things, I want to eventually add a goal for some specific testing equipment, but I need to figure out what it is first. So maybe like thermal chamber or something like that. That's, that's in the really expensive territory. We might do that. Thermal test to P600, no, but if I remember correctly, the P600S, Patrick, do you remember, is the P600X the same chassis and t the same tooling as the P500A, you remember? Yes. Um, it was similar to this one. The, um, what is that one? I forget. The, uh, We're trying to remember Fantex case names right now. Uh, is that a recent review? Yes, yeah, the N3 Oh, the N3 Pro. Pro 2? Yeah, Pro 2. Yeah, okay. okay, we worked together. <laughs> so, so the, wait, so the P500 is similar to the Pro 2 or the P600? We haven't. We don't actually have a P600 here. But. I think it is similar to the Pro 2. Okay, similar to the Pro 2 for the P. Okay. Um, I have not tested the P600. Uh, however, I'm aware that there is a mesh-fronted version. I think it's. I'm pulling it up right now. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So the P600S. I remember covering this at CES. It's got that. Um, then you can pull out in the front. I think it, does it have the mat or the fabric? Oh, it does have the fabric. It might be, I'm sure chat knows. It looks like really similar tooling to the Pro 2. Even if it's not though, the performance for the P600S should be pretty similar in a like for like fan config to the uh, Pro 2, which we have tested. Let me not melt this. One sec. Oh, oh yeah, that that's similar, but it's that might be the same. Is that the same? Yeah, Patrick, if you can look up for me the tooling, uh, see if anyone's commented on the tooling for the P600S, and if it comes from something else. This looks like a P600S panel. Is that from our 500 or from our? They sent us this so that we would have access to the mesh. Oh, okay. So that is, I think that is a P600S panel. 
Yeah, so um, Thrombol should be pretty similar to the Pro 2 that we tested. It's on the channel, but uh, only if you do a like for like fans. So if it's got a different fan config, which I don't have memorized top of my head, but I can look, then the, um, the Pro 2 should be pretty similar to the 600S. Haven't tested it though. Uh, let's see, specs, a few full specs. Where's the fans? So it is three installed, oh, two installed front fans, one installed rear, and then what's the Fantex N2 Pro 2 specs? I don't keep this stuff memorized. We reviewed too many products, otherwise I'd, I'd be happy to recite it off the top of my head, but unfortunately, I do not. I used to memorize it, and that was when we reviewed a lot fewer products. Where's the fan count? Patrick's looking up some additional information for you, too. Uh, front fan supports 3140s. No. Uh, included. Wow, their website's not not very good for is it empty oh it's empty isn't it yeah so if you installed the same fans i think you'll get about the same performance but that power supply shroud's different though that's a that's a potential impact for the gpu thermals but i should think the cpu thermals would be very similar with the same fan config all right hopefully that helps uh patrick's looking up some other stuff just in case but anyway um this stuff let me get some more ellen too where are we we're at 35 i wanted to get i need to pull this way down like way way down to negatives mm -hmm. And then we're gonna just do a quake run with the highest clock I can get, because why not? That sounds kind of fun. We'll do an 8K gaming run of Quake 2 RTX. Does anyone in chat, uh, anyone in chat want to try and, this is overfilled, try and uh, take a guess at, um, at what the frame rate's gonna be? Wow, that mist is getting all the way over to Andrew's feet. For uh, Quake 2 RTX 8K, take a guess at the frame rate. I'll, I'll keep an eye on chat for a moment. It's an 8K gaming card, right? NVIDIA told me it is. It's an RTX 3090. Surely this should be no problem. Let me, let me read some of the comments. Give me your guess. What's going to be the frame rate? 8K Quake 2 RTX. Manso says 2 FPS. I'm seeing 20, 24 to 28. Someone says 800, uh, 15, 15, 15, 34, 25, 12, 1. Well, you don't have any faith in it, do you? 12. There's a lot of people in the 20 to 30 range. So this will be fun, I think. Uh, I need to bring this down a little more. What's our current temp? We're at 3 on the thermocouple reader. Our delta is actually not great on this. Mount's, mount's not as good as it could be, but it'll be good enough for this. Chat's still guessing. So uh, saying 44, 32, 70, 20, 43. <laughs> seeing a couple 12s, couple 11s. I'd say most people are in the range of still 20 to 30, maybe 40 upper end. So that should be kind of fun. Uh, we're at, I can't read this. Minus 13. I need to get this down to probably about minus... Well, I don't know where this card will crash, so we'll figure that out live. At some point, it'll crash. Chat still guessing. <laughs> See, $100 donation. I'm going to go back for, for all of them. We'll have a cutoff at some point, but I will get all of them in there now. Uh, just give me, give me a moment. Sebastian... Uh, Beresniewicz. Beresniewicz? Sorry. Says, giving back for all I've gotten out of your channel. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, and we have uh, a lot of fun doing these, too. This is actually good information. We've gotten a 50 megahertz range so far out of, like, a, a normal water-cooled temperature down to a maybe a, a chilled temperature for the frequency range we tested earlier. So, minus 30. I need to bring it down lower still. I should fill a bunch of these so we can keep going. Joe would be yelling at me because he would say, I told you to put it in the bottle, not on the floor. I get a super chat while I fill the next one. Let's 
see. So I stopped on this one previously. Uh, ZoMG CMPTRS says, I finally replaced my 2600K with a 2600X. You just, you couldn't move on from the 2600 naming, could you? Says, uh, looking forward to Zen 3 for a new dedicated gaming box. Uh, thanks for what you do. Buy some tater tots. Well, that's, see, now I'm going to want tater tots for the rest of the stream. Uh, but I appreciate that that our chat is keeping this particular meme alive. I still don't know where it came from. I think Joe once was in chat. He wasn't even here. And he just said something about how he was at home eating tater tots watching the stream. And then suddenly everyone's commenting on tater tots. I think that's where that one came from. So I'm bringing this down to minus, probably minus 100 or so. I don't know if this can do full pot. And then we'll uh, bring it back to get some kind of overclock with Quake. And we'll do a run on that, see how close chat got to the numbers. And uh, see how 8K gaming really does. I'll let me put all these. Okay. Small, I need a smaller thermos. There we go. This just makes it easier to transfer if you're wondering why uh, I'm using multiple. A little more accurate. Okay, let's get some clocks punched in. Let's try like a 50 offset for, uh, that might be a bit aggressive, but we'll try it. We can only do 114% power target on this card, so we will be limited on power target. I need more to push it higher. Uh, normally we get around that with a custom V BIOS, but NVIDIA is, is not a big distributor of custom V BIOSes. I'm trying to get some Strix and uh, Tough cards in because they have three pin connectors I can plug an Elmore EVC into and do some direct voltage control, so that's going to be really fun for this, I think. We, I have not used the EVC yet, but you can control the voltage of the card through the voltage controller through pins on the board. Uh, and that is normally the, the biggest limitation short of power. The next one's voltage. So we're getting 50. We're at minus 70 right now. Let's try a 70 offset. It's going to crash at some point. Uh, at that point, we'll dial it back, and then we'll run Quake. Let's get a super chat while that cools. Uh, Evil Cotty Productions this is from 7.38, so about 50 minutes behind. Said, hey, I finally caught you live again. Let's kill some cards to freak out the normies. Here's some money for tater tots. No, no, let's not kill some cards. That is not the goal today. Uh, Jake Stuggel says, man, you deserve all the super chats for how much work you've been putting in for this launch. Thanks for consistently great content. Thanks for watching it. We're starting to hit, I think, period of overload for people on the 20, the, the 20, the 30 series. But... Uh, We've still got some more to work through, and we're going to be back to some cases and coolers pretty soon as well. Galahad's been highly requested, and the Landcool 215 are both data complete. Just need to be kind of recorded and all that stuff. Let's see, so... Oh, man, no, you don't, you don't need to do that. Stove, Stoven Eisen. I think I misread it the first time. Eisen. Stoven Eisen sent another 500. Man. That, that feels, that's like too much, but thank you. But uh, we need to like send you at least mod mats or something for it. So I don't know, I don't know how to verify that. Someone else is gonna claim they're you. Uh, email us or something if you want it and send, send the receipt, the super chat receipt and, the, and we'll get you something. But um, team at gamersnexus.net. Uh, so Stoven Eisen says, wow, thanks for looking that case up. Uh, at the office we have a Cincinnati sub-zero chamber. Oh, cool. There's some more inf interesting information about it, too, but let me prevent this from boiling. It uh, says, Sub-Zero Chamber was around 10K 10 years ago. And it says, thank you, Stovenism. Oh, the name changed. Okay. Uh, what kind of chamber was it? Sub-Zero. Sub yeah, that sounds about right. I'm hoping to buy some thermal chamber of some kind. We need more space, though, is the problem. But, so that's going to be the bigger hidden expense is the space. 
but uh, I do want to get a thermal chamber to help control for cooler testing and for um, uh, case testing and stuff like that. Even GPU thermals would make, be made a lot easier with a chamber. Uh, another long-term goal of mine that we can't do anytime soon because we need space is an acoustic chamber of some kind. Not like full anechoic, can't afford that. Those are insane expensive. But semi-anechoic, if we get a noise floor of like 15, that would be crazy. It would be comparable to what MSI uses to test their cards. So that's one of the long-term goals. But that's, that's, like, that's pretty far out because we need space for it. So, uh, But yeah, thermal chamber. I... 10K sounds about right for the for a sub-zero chamber that this user's saying that they've had. 90 offset, we're gonna stop here and just try Quake with that. Let me see what the clocks go up to though on the memory. Let's do a 700 and see if it crashes. Insta crash or not, ah, it's still alive. Kind of tempted to say, let's just give it a go with this. If we can clock up higher, then cool. I kill Time Spy. Uh, let me bring the camera over here for a minute, Andrew, because I'm not sure what we have typed into this stuff. And we're going to launch Quake to RTX. Once I, uh, oh, I need, oh, I think I need internet for that. Let me get a wireless card. <clears throat> wireless. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay. It's getting a wireless card for Steam. Where is it? In, in the, oh, in the board. Thank you. Around this side, Andrew. Now the slowest point in the system. <laughs> but we're not going to be internet connected for this, so uh, I hope it auto detects that wireless card. <laughs> Otherwise, there will be no quake unless I pull Ethernet out of the streaming system. Drivers, please. Nope. What solution do I have? I run a really long Ethernet cable. Where's our closest Ethernet hookup? Um, is there one here somewhere? There is, yeah. Um, there's one right there. OK. Can you help me run a, is this a, a functional long cable? It's functional. It's not that long. Like OK. All right. If you can find one, that'd be great. Thanks. In the meantime, um, let's, uh, I'm not going to run Port Royal. I really want to, but we're not going to do it. Let me see. Patrick's grabbing an Ethernet cable so we can run this. Oh, right. I forgot about that one. <laughs> We're like, we have a 100 foot long Ethernet cable, which will be about 70 feet too long, but that's okay. We'll clean it up later. Let me do some super chats while Patrick's helping me out with the cable, and then we'll run. Uh, I'm going to keep it cold, though, so we don't have to do that again, and we'll run Quake. I still remember what chat was guessing for the FPS, so we'll go through that too. Okay, so Recycled says, geez, stop having so much integrity, lol. I, I don't, I'm not sure what I said at 7.38. I appreciate it. I'm assuming it was in response to the, uh, the Stoven response. Uh, Deputy Gamer, where I said, like, uh, I don't know what to say. Deputy Gamer says, is the Fractal Defined 7 compact case Reasonable to use for an air it's fine. I, the corner of my eye, I can see the Ethernet cable on its way. It's it's working its way over here. Uh, let's roll it to Andrew's side because it's going to be into that system. Thank you. Uh, Compact 7 case for an air cooled 3080 setup with an after with aftermarket cooling parts. I'm worried about cooling. So fortunately, the 3080 partner cards that we've tested so far are doing pretty well thermally. If I don't know how many slots of room you have in that case, but if it can fit it and it's not against the glass, then most cases should be fine as long as you have some airflow. Let me look up that specific case and while well, we're getting this ethernet cable sorted. We can get rid of that too. So let's see, we did review the Fractal Define 7, but not the Compact. Define 7 did pretty well in testing actually, I liked it. Uh, so I think you'll be fine with a Define 7 if you have intake fans, like all of them that can fit in there, especially above the power supply shroud to get air into the GPU. 
I think you'll be okay. Don't vertically mount. I don't think this case can, but um, that should uh, that should be okay. Okay, see if the cable works. Is it plugged in on the other side? You might have to plug it into that um, that uh, network switch. Network adapters. Okay, they are installed. That's good. Patrick's gonna check on the network switch. Let's take another chat. This was obviously not part of the streaming plan, but I think it would be fun, so. Uh, let's see, had a super chat coming from i3 lack, period. I'm assuming that's black, period. Uh, 99.99, wow, thank you. It says another $100, what's that? Oh, okay, another $100 for the team. Great work and content, thank you. I wish I wish I could answer a question for you, but I don't see one there. Um, is it in the switch? It's in the wall, but it's connected. Oh, thanks. Patrick saw from 20 feet away that it was connected. So uh, give me a second to launch Steam and stuff and make sure we're logged in, and then we'll do Quake. This will be kind of fun. So the chat was thinking, well, we're at minus 100, by the way, and it's still live, so that's good. Chat was thinking 20 to 30 range was the popular guess here for this, uh, for Quake 2 RTX 8K. That was the estimate. Will there be Rip Jan Port Royal? Also, what CPU is this? It's a 10 900K, 5.3 gigahertz, I think I would set to. There will be a Rip Jan Port Royal. Uh, tonight, I will hopefully get started with an FTW3 card on air, but it's not going to beat his score. And I don't want to use this to beat a score because that's not, Jay and I decided we're not going to LN2 until the very end. We want to try some more extreme cooling because it'll be a lot of fun to kind of work through ridiculous solutions before we get to, I guess LN2 is ridiculous too, before we get to LN2. I'm just killing all the Steam applications. Okay. That would be awesome if Steam weren't freaking out right now. End process. End process. Yes, yeah, so there will be a Rip J series coming up. He's got his score started. He hooked up to an air conditioner, so that's always, that's like his thing. I have a couple ideas uh, for some new unique things we can do for this round. And I'm looking forward to it. We'll get started by binning the EVGA card. Okay, Quake's launching. We're good to go. What CPU cooler is it? It is a liquid freezer. Two three sixty. Someone says, "Great decision leaving Allen two for last." Yeah, we thought it'd be more fun that way. Let's see options. Let's get a video. Let's do. Do I have? I'm gonna have to turn DSR on for this monitor. I think this is such an annoying way to change resolution. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to turn DSR on. So let me do that. So NVIDIA control panel. And uh, uh, this setting is in 3D settings. And then there's one called DSR. Let's set that to four, I think. Uh, I might need to go higher on this display. I can get another display if I have to. I think it's gonna have to go higher on this display. Display settings. Oh yeah, we're gonna have to go higher than that. Oh, but there's, there's a <laughs> resolution scale in Quake. This doesn't really have much impact on the performance numbers. So let's try this again. And set the resolution scale to something better than this, perhaps. <laughs> it's visible. Uh, I know there's a menu scale in here. Graphic, oh, let's go back, let's go video. I'm gonna have to Yes. Is this it? Yes, that is resolution. Okay, well that made it worse. Let's go up one. I'm gonna have to change the resolution on desktop. That's that's so so clunky. Believe it or not, the Quake interface was not really updated very much for this launch of this product. Uh see, so we're going to change desktop resolution to 1080. Keep changes. Launch Quake. And... 
some client bootstrapper, Quake 2 RTX. Okay. <laughs> so we're at 81, minus 81 degrees Celsius. Uh, man, that resolution scaling option is not what I need. What is the solution to this problem? Let's see if there's a console command. Quake to RTX console commands resolution. That would be too easy, wouldn't it? Let's see. Uh, I don't know. Patrick, I might need some assistance again. Can you grab me the 4K monitor in there? And then we're going to swap that out. This can stay... Actually, I'll take the 4K monitor that... Um, that uh, Mike was using. It has HDMI input and those don't. Thank you. All right, Quake 2. Like I said, not part of the plan, but I really want to try some, really want to enjoy that NVIDIA 8K gaming experience. So that is what we're going to do. See what it really takes. It's even better when you play games without a monitor. That's how good the 3090 is. We don't need monitors anymore. We've evolved past them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's truly future technology. <laughs> Even the LN2 tank agrees. Where's HDMI? I like plugging things into monitors. I really like the ones that actually have uh, input on the side instead. Let's see. There we go. HDMI is good. We're just getting a power cable. GB temperature is six, minus 62 for the LN2 pot. grabbing a cable, I think. All right, let me take a couple of the chats. I'll look at the normal chat and the super chats. Well, like I said, you can grab these shirts like the one I've got on on store.gamersnexus.net if you want to pick one of those up while we're getting a uh, cable out. Okay, so what's chat saying? Chat says, I play 16K gaming. Jeff Bezos in the chat. Someone says, Scrub's still stuck on 8K. Get on my 16K level. Bill Gates in the chat, too. Good to see. Good to see both of you. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see. Look at this 8K gaming at its finest, someone says. All right. Let's see if things will cooperate now. Am I plugged in? Yes. Is it cycling? Cycling. Okay, cool. Good. This monitor is pretty easy to work with. So now I should be able to go up in resolution to be higher than 4K. So we're going to try. Uh, this is going to be so fun to look at with eyes from this distance. Uh, 4x DSR apply and then we're gonna do display settings there we go eight so-called K which is 7.6 K which is 4320p perfectly responsible marketing quake let's see if it works can you benchmark 8K without an 8K monitor? In a sense, yes. This will be pretty close to the same results you would get. Oh, that's a good frame rate. Uh, so let's do video, and then we're going to set this. This is going to take a little bit to 8, eight so-called K. There it is. And we're going to do 4 for reflection and refraction depth. Show FPS. Need that. Uh, let's see if that applies. The screen is going to be very small. 
but there's an option somewhere in here that I can scale it up. I just have to find it. Uh, let's see. Screen setup, I think. Screen setup. Oh, there we go. Menu scale. Oh, 4x is it, huh? Okay, well, that's better than it should be. So now we're going to run it. So I think the command is, this is the console. We're going to do time demo one. That's going to turn on a timed demo. So what it's going to do is benchmark the amount of time required to complete the benchmark. And then we're, actually, let's turn that off first. Let's run it normally. Time demo zero. Let's do demo q2 d demo two, demo one dot dm2 is the command. q2 demo one dot dm2. We're at minus 68 degrees right now. This is 8K gaming with RTX on. Those of you who said 12 FPS, I know you can't see it in the corner because we'll need a, uh, a super telephoto lens to see the head small. <laughs> but those of you who said 12 FPS, you can be proud of yourself. You got it. It's 12 FPS right now. You can see it? That's impressive. So this is, I look at OBS to see how it looks. How does, how does that look? Oh, wow. That is uh, quite the zoom. So this is minus 70 degrees Celsius. We've got a little bit of an overclock on, but we can't do much without power control, or more of it anyway. And uh, there's your true 8K gaming experience. A couple of you said 13 too. I think you, depending on when you look at the counter, you got it. Anyone, I would say anyone in the 10 to 22 range is, should be proud of their ability to call it. Let's bring it down a little more. Let's see if we can get one more, one more FPS out of it. I'm going to turn time demo on now. Time demo one. And then the command, if you want to do this at home, uh, Quake 2 RTX is free. If you have a 20 series or a 30 series card, if you have a 30 series card, then uh, hello to my fellow YouTubers. But if you have a 20 series card, you can also do this. Quake 2 demo uh, is free to download on Steam. If you want to play our lawn and see your frame rate, but you do, we're at 8K, 8 so-called K resolution. Uh, demo, Q2 demo 1.dm2. That's the command if you do want to run this on your own system, even without, um, you know, even without 8K, you can still run it. Kind of a fun test of technology. We're at minus 100 degrees Celsius right now. We're not getting much more frequency scale without a bigger overclock, so I think I will need to. Um, I think I will need to uh, try and increase the memory clock a bit, but I don't know how much we're going to get out of this card because I don't have power control. So uh, pour the whole can. Unfortunately, I can't because it'll overflow. Um, someone's asking about SLI. I tried it, so. I tried two 3090s on this yesterday. I was hoping we could stream with that, but it did not seem to be working. Um, it, we don't have a bridge. It should work without a bridge, though. Vulkan and DX12, some games, they can do explicit multi-GPU via the PCIe slot. What was the time? 11.6 average, 54.5 seconds. Let me write that down. That's our score. 54.5 seconds, 11.6 FPS average. Let's do... Let's do an overclock. You don't need to worry about showing that Steam page, Andrew. Uh, let's do an overclock on the memory. I don't know what we're going to be stable on. Oh. Uh, let's try, I don't know, 850. It seems like a stretch, but let's try that. Why did this go down? Power target, 114. We should be able to get more than that. OK. Uh, I wish I could see my taskbar or literally anything, but we're going to do the best here. So Quake 2 now, minus 120. This is, I mean, the card's doing well for temperature. It's not, sometimes you'll get a crash. Uh, so time demo 1, I don't know if I need to re-enable that, but Q2, uh, demo, Q2 demo 1 dot, dot DM2. And we are with running with extra memory speed now and colder wow that's really boiling fast that's a lot of power going into the card right now for sure so for perspective it was minus 125 degrees celsius when i started this instantly went to minus 110 up obviously so i 
15 degree change that fast, that's a lot of power going into the card. It is uh, ultimately limited thanks to the BIOS, but we're gonna see what the time requirement is to complete this test. And uh, it looks like the clocks are stable though. It's minus 117 right now. I got a bit of a pour in there before. I guess we'll just empty this doer. So that's Quake 2 we're running. We'll get to uh, get to some other stuff after that. 12 FPS, yeah, you got it for sure. <sighs> oh, let's check that score. Uh, 54.2, 11.6. That is in fact a 0 0.3 second improvement. Is it still 11.6? And the same FPS as previously, 11.6. Someone says, but DLSS? Yes, unfortunately not available here. Ten, good to, good to see you here. Ten's, uh says he's going to work on some of his electrical projects. I want to visit Tin's crazy evil scientist lab as soon as we're able to. He's been setting one up. Minus 130. Let's go ahead and bring that up a little more. Uh, kill precision. So precision uh, has a little bit of a hit on the performance. So I always try to kill it after uh, once we're once we're running the test. That is, in fact, 8K RTX gaming, 12 FPS on a, a 3090. I'd love to do it on two, but it didn't seem to work. Let's try a 950 offset. Last time we got a 0.3 uplift from the memory increase of 100 megahertz, 150 megahertz. So let's see if we can get another 0.3 or something. Uh, demo, oh no, we need time demo one. Time demo one, which is important because this takes a long time since it is on uh, 8K. 13 FPS, let me take some super chats while this one completes. I am really filling that on two pots, so we'll see, it might crash. All right, uh, the Ozum says, hi Steve, just got my mouse pad. This thing is super nice. Thanks for making a great product. Thank you for buying one. I'm not sure if you got one of the mouse pads or the mouse mats. The mouse mats, uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream, we took a, an inventory count. We had not not that many left between now and the next order, but I've added them to the uh, inventory on store.gamersnexus.net, and that's going to be the, the amount I put in there is going to be it until we get the next order in. So if you want to pick one up, you can go to store.gamersnexus.net. But thank you, the Ozum, for buying one. I'm glad you like it. Daniel Kent says. Uh, thanks, Gamers Nexus, for the sleepless nights and diehard approach to hardware. Uh, it's intersection with society, game, and production. I'm so excited to watch the airflow simulation content. Uh, yeah, I want to do a lot more work on figuring out how I should best present that. For now, we just did screen caps with me talking over it. I think I can do, th do it way better than that, but I need to figure out how to talk about that. Uh, this, this person, uh, Daniel, is talking about the uh, Schlieren photographs that we did recently. 54.2, is that the same score? Yeah, <laughs> 100, 100 megahertz didn't help. I think we're going to need either more mem or more core, and we're not going to get that, I don't think. Let's just go for uh, broke and see if it crashes, and then we'll move on probably to the, uh, to the other card. Let's try like 110. I think that's going to be too aggressive. Let's try 1100 here, which is probably too aggressive. Apply, close. I find Steam, Quake, okay. It's minus 130, I'm gonna go ahead and bring it down to like 140, 145. It's heating up because just launched the game in 8K, so we're combating that a little bit. Let's see, Super Chats. Uh, like I'm gonna get through all these that we have so far at least. Um, but I am about an hour behind on them, so I apologize, but I'm gonna get through them. Kyle Dunbar says, here's 10 Canadian dollars. Please put it towards developing the ultimate GN mountain bike multi-tool. <laughs> uh, and said, those of you who don't know, I, I have some mountain biking videos, downhill biking videos on our side channel, which is just called GN Steve. So that's what that's in reference to. Says, uh, overclocking GPs is awesome, but so is riding bikes downhill. Hope you find time to get out. I'm hoping 
to get some downhill rides in soon. I'll put them on the side channel when I do. We're gonna go cold for this one. So we're minus 150 and drop in. Let's see if it see if this card will will stay up. When I say survive, I don't mean like actually break. I mean will it not crash? So let's do a time demo one. Probably don't need to type that in every time, but demo q2 demo one dot dm2. Alright. This is the go for broke. Overclock. That does not look good. Oh, that was a bad start. That doesn't count. Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, much better start. Minus 155 degrees Celsius. Full pot right now. Uh, not temperature, but the LN2 pot is literally full of LN2. So I saw it hit 14 FPS for about half a millisecond. That is quite the improvement. If we, do, if we do a percent increase, we can make it sound really good. Let's do that. 14 minus 12, divided by 12. That is a 16.7% increase in frame rate for half a millisecond or so. I would say this is highly playable. <laughs> so yes, Quake 2, 8K resolution if you're just tuning in. Uh, RTX on, of course. No DLSS in this title. Unfortunately, SLI was not working either. I'd be doing that. Now we're full pot. That's minus 190. So the score was 54.0 seconds, 11.7 FPS. That is, in fact, an improvement. 54.0 seconds. That's pretty good. 11.7 FPS average. Not bad. Someone says Jensen has left the chat. <laughs> 14 FPS. Nice. Anyone know where I can find a 15 hertz monitor? Chat says. Uh... Stoby, are you doing mod mats today? I love your content. By the way, what type of... <laughs> oh, okay. Someone says, what type of agricultural supplies were you talking about the other day? Yes. Yeah, so when I talked about this thing, I said doers are... Uh, if you buy them used, you have to be careful. And I said agriculture is the other use. Probably the better phrasing would have been... What is it called? Uh, what is that called? It's an, I know it's an Age of Empires. It's an upgrade in Age of Empires 2. What is it called when you... Uh, there is a specific name for this, and it's going to bother me. Oh, I can't find it. Well, it's, it's for breeding horses is the other use, or cows or whatever. So you want to be careful when you buy a used one. We bought that new for that reason. Uh, so the answer to your question is no. And uh, it's, it's used for something that you don't necessarily want to use to do or for. Unless you ask first, what was this used for? And they say liquid nitrogen, then you might be OK. 54.0 was the score once again. No improvement at full pot. Cool thing, though, is this did run, in fact, uh, this did run husbandry, thank you. Animal husbandry. Someone, someone figured out what I was trying to find. I don't know if you knew that because of my Age of Empires 2 reference, which is, of course, the most normal way to, to learn the phrase animal husbandry. But that is what I was trying to find. <laughs> I probably should have just looked up like Age of Empires 2 upgrade path. Uh, OK, so this runs up full pot. So that's awesome. Uh, minus 190-something degrees Celsius. And that's better than I've seen on some previous cards we've worked with. So good to see. The next thing I want to test is the EVJ FTW3 with air. So what I'm going to do is run uh, Time Spy for a minute. And the reason I'm going to run that is strictly to heat up the card. Um, the reason I want to do that is because I'm going to pull the card out. I don't want the PCIe slot to be frozen when I pull the card out because I don't want to rip the slot out of the board. And also because uh, it's too cold to touch right now. So we're just going to run this to burn it. And once it's at about, let's say, 10 degrees Celsius above zero, I will remove the, the card and run, um, run the other one. So let's do just windowed and just run that for a bit. And then we'll uh, I'll be good to go. Let's see, what was that? OK, so what's chat saying? Uh, oh, yeah, so are you doing mod mats today? Uh, selling them, yes. I'm not signing them, though, today. I, there's a signed one on the site you can buy. 
uh, but we're not doing a special stream promo other than selling these shirts, which are low on inventory right now, and then the mouse mats that we've restocked a few of. Brian says, love the toolkit bought off the store. Thank you. Well, thanks for buying it. Glad you like it. We put a lot of time into those. Also, why do you think Asus hasn't released the Strix line? Do you think it's related to caps? No, uh, I honestly don't. I don't think they knew about this issue until kind of late anyway. Uh, <laughs> that time spy window. I think it's... Uh, I think it's delayed because they can't get enough supply and Strix typically comes out late. If they're doing a custom PCB, that's the real reason. So typically with launches, you'll see cards with a reference board come out first, which I think we have one over here. A reference board will come out first. Uh, I think that's reference. And then after that, you'll get the custom boards. So. NVIDIA makes the reference board, much like they make the FE board, or at least they spec it and they have someone make it. They provide these to partners so they can hit launch, but then the custom cards you'll typically see delayed because uh, they need to get all the des designs in, figure out what the clock targets are, stuff like that. So depending on, it's basically it's NVIDIA's fault that the high-end cards don't come out earlier because NVIDIA's trying to control it to a point where there's no leaks, but there's a downside too, um, obviously. But, uh, okay, so what's this? This is at minus 100. I probably need to help it out a little bit. Let's warm it up so I can dismount this thing. Uh, let's see, super chat. J. Jacob J. sent a cat icon. Much appreciated. <laughs> Zach Gambrell said, you should get Kingpin to make darker thermal paste to match the GN signature blue. I actually, I'm not sure how difficult it is to do that mix. I know colorizing things like paste is, uh, is kind of sometimes trendy. Roman's trying to do it with his Cryonaut. He's got like a reddish pink color for Cryonaut Extreme. But uh, yeah, Vince has been doing, KP's been doing blue for a long time. Next question is from Nick S. Says, thanks for all the tech information and really in-depth stuff you guys do. I hope you can take a look at Igor's lab research on the 3080 crashes. Yes, I will be doing that. Uh, I, that's a little close. I do not, I have not looked at it yet, but I am planning to look at the, uh, the crashes, yes. Um, we've done a little bit of research, but not as much as I'd like to do for actually talking about it yet. I need to do a lot more work on it. Let's see. Next one is from, ne oh no, I got yours. Trainer911 says, uh, thanks for all the tech information. Oh, I know, I got yours. Uh, I think I misread the name though. A person says, are AMD's Vega GPU drivers still improving? I don't know. The drivers are still improving. The software's probably still improving. I don't know if they're working on Vega or not. This is probably just about warm enough. I need another 10 degrees out of it and that will be good. I'll stop using the torch because once you start getting to the temperature you want to be at, uh, if you keep torching it, there's like a latent effect where it'll, it'll, there's some lag on the heat up. What settings were on for Quake while you were testing? Curious why the FPS was so low. 76, what is it, 7620? I haven't memorized yet. Is it 7620? 7680. 7680 by 4320 is why the resolution was so low. It's so 8K. Uh, let's see. Bobby says, why use Vaseline and not dielectric grease? Uh, because we have it here already. Uh, I am used to it. It's easy to remove, easy to apply, all that stuff. I think we're good. I can, I can shut this down. I'll put the other card in. So then we can swap to the FCW3 and uh, do some on-air overclocking. Let's see. Ah, Nick S, thanks for the PCH content. I'm guessing that's from earlier today. What have you observed as normal idle and load times for XY Sony chipset, if an ideal airflow and case standard AIB GPU mount? Uh, normal, I don't have in my head anymore, but idle, if the fan's off, you should be like 50s or thereabouts, maybe plus or minus 10, because I don't have it memorized. Um, under heavy load with uh, like a high-end M.2 SSD, you might need an active cooling on it, which most of those boards have. Let's cut that power. And then let's move these. That's mostly empty anyway. Let's go. 
Alan 2 in it. See if the slot is thawed out. Okay. How cold? Not too cold. That's good. Sometimes I'll be too cold to pick it up. Oh, actually, I should disconnect the power first. Get that 12 pin. Okay. Partner model time. Uh, oh, actually, I guess we don't need the meter anymore anyway, because we're not going below zero for the EVGA card. Okay. So EVGA card, I am going to um, take the back plate off, remove thermocouples, and replace the paste. And then we'll run that. I've already completed thermal testing on this. We haven't published it yet, but. Oh yeah, Nick, I, got your, I just got yours. Nick says, you mixed up my super chat with another one. Just got yours, because I realized that. Uh, James Morris, no message. OK, so where's what I need? Screwdrivers. Let me try and get a somewhat of a view of this. Can you see this OK, Andrew? If you need to move that fan, go for it. We're going to just unbuild this whole thing, I think. Actually, while I do this, maybe I can get some help on the chat. Andrew, can you hook up another receiver? We're going to do some super chats while I work on this card. I'm going to take it apart. Uh, you'll get a live teardown, basically, of the FTW 33090. And then we're going to uh, replace thermal paste and all that stuff. Patrick, you mind if uh, I get your help reading super chats for a minute yeah, no while I I'm going to mute this line until you've got it plugged in, Andrew, while I do this card? Oops. So I guess one second. Patrick's about to join me. What have you been working on, Case? The so Patrick's been working on, I think, the uh, Cooler Master, right, and our 200P. Hmm. So we're going to go through some of the chats. There you go. And... Uh, I'll work on the card. Let me figure out where we stopped. Let's see. Got that one. Can it run Crisis 1? Uh, yes, it can run Crisis 1. Not at 8K, but it can. Uh, let's see. Someone's talking about the MLCCs. Now this one, I don't know. I haven't had any issues with it, so... Jury is not fully out on this matter yet. See all the super chats we're working on them. Okay, Andrew, let us know when you're ready. I'm unmuted, so I really hope you're ready. <laughs> I guess uh, if you can check that with. So Patrick's joining now. Can you hear him, Andrew? Can you hear me, Andrew? Okay, good. good. All right. Hopefully it's coming through correctly. I guess pin chat if not, but. Uh, all right, so I stopped on the one that's highlighted. Okay. Kit, I think. I guess just read them before you read them out loud, and then we'll go through a few. And uh, I'm just replacing this. Oh, yeah, it's right there. Uh, so you read this one already? No. Okay. Uh, Kitch Ladder, $22, says, It's been eight years since I last researched a custom build, oh. um, and I want a system that will last. Do you have any advice for someone who's been out of the loop for a while? Is it a good or bad time to start a new long-term build? Mm, I would say a good time because GPUs are coming out right now. So AMD's comes out soon, and NVIDIA's out. So long-term, it's not like you're in the middle of launch cycles. You're right at the beginning. You're not going to get another new launch cycle for a while. Prices might go down over time. CPU side, AMD's got stuff coming out. Uh, last time you built a computer, if it was eight years ago, AMD was not in the conversation at all. So a really good time for competitive options between them. Uh, yeah, I'd say now's a pretty good time. Um, Five dollars from Nick Mathieson. Uh, post the scores to hardware bot. Team Bearded Hardware is beating Team's Gamers Nexus <laughs> right now. I I can post them to hardware bot, I guess, but that'd be kind of like a team kill too. Joe Joe was on our team a few days ago. <laughs> Um, we got that question already about dielectric grease. Yes, um, got that one. Thank you for the $2. Um, 
William Perot, $20. Are you worried about NVIDIA G-Men kidnapping you in the middle of the night after your RTX 3090 review? No. I think they've got bigger things to worry about, like making the card they put on the market. The G is for green. <laughs> um, VC Jester, $30.90. Thanks for putting up with my bad jokes. You're the best. Uh, yeah, no problem. It's, yeah. I bet there's some more of them if I scroll down here. <laughs> um, 10 pounds from Mark McCune. Um, McCown? I have a Corsair 220T tempered glass RGB case with three exhaust fans, um, but the only intake fans are my CPU AIO at the front. Is this bad? It feels like case can't be getting much air if it's going to the radiator. Thank you. Well, what's the case? Corsair 220T. Airflow? Uh, it does not say. If it's airflow, here. you're probably fine. If it's not airflow, then it's probably warm because of the case. Um, yeah, uh, I mean, air's still getting in there. It's just going to be warmed air, but it's still going in. The pressure's going to be lower. So, yes, it will affect thermals, but I don't think it'll be that really big of a deal. Let's, there's a... Uh, we've got the benefit of one of those... Uh, the screw, one of the screws had a nut on the other side, and it was inside the card. So I'm going to have to remember to remove that in a second. What's the next one? Uh, $20 from Ben Goodman. Please deposit this into the sleep bank. I wish it worked that way. <laughs> if you could just trade money for sleep, I feel like that's like a game-breaking bug. <laughs> like, <laughs> just like... It'd be way more efficient that way. Yeah, assuming the exchange rate is better than like the wage, that would definitely be game, that's like a balance-breaking bug. If Blizzard makes the game of life, then there'll never be a fix. That'd be great. What's the next one? Uh, Five dollars Australian from Manitou Black. Great stream. Why not box the mono slash GPU and constantly purge with into to prevent condensation? You could. Um, it gets difficult to control. We have a video of that with uh, Elmore. Did a box similar to what you're talking about. I just dropped. That thing, but it's not in the card anymore, so I guess I don't really care. This could be, these could have been better. This is like MSI style pad application MS that uh, EBJ had. Um, yeah, you can do box stuff like that. So, like I said, Elmore did one, uh, he's an overclocker at um, Computex. Um, Five dollars from Joshua Sweet. Uh, I have seen every review of these GPUs running on an Intel system. How do these GPUs run on systems that support PCIe Gen 4? We did that test. There's a video called PCIe Gen 3 versus Gen 4, and it's on the RTX 3080. So that is on the channel if you want to check it out. Uh, oh, this. $5 Canadian from Sebastian Carrier. Uh, hi, Steven. Love the stuff that you do. Quick question. Do you think that the 7700K is too old? For a 3080, I'm playing on a 1440p 144 hertz monitor. 7700K too old for a 3080. Oh, actually, you are going to bottleneck. Um, we have tests with CPUs where we're on a 2080 Ti, and it bottlenecks. So you will be bottlenecking, yes. Wow, this is so glued. Am I missing a screw somewhere? I don't think so. It should be the same process as the 3080, which I have taken apart. Um, two dollars from Corey Butler to say, "DD Mega Doo Doo." <laughs> um, Five dollars from Max Shadow. Hey Steve, any news on TI slash Super Cards, or will it be a while? Uh, no news at all. I don't know anything about them. It's it's not me being coy either. Um, Ten dollars from Two Cans. Uh, just wanted to support the purchase of more cool equipment. Already a Patreon, but love that you're always expanding testing, like with the Schlieren. More please, uh, hyphen, a scientist, not tech, though. <laughs> We're working on more, for sure. Here, uh, before I pull out this harder, look at this and tell me if I'm overlooking a screw. I don't think I am, because I've taken that other, the 3081 apart. Uh, let's see. Did you make a dude? Uh, who did you stop on? Do you remember? Uh, the one that says... Science. Not tech. Though. Oh, okay. Yeah, Toucans, thank you. We're working on a lot more of that stuff. Harlemont says, 
Uh, RTX 3090 review almost killed me. Well, that was not the intent. I, I did not intend for you to almost die from that review. <laughs> uh, let's see. Someone says you will not get any info out of reviewers. They've all been told to hush hush. No, if I were under NDA, I wouldn't have said anything. In fact, I'm not under NDA. So I can say that I'm not under NDA. <laughs> Let's uh, figure that one out. Uh, 40, 40 RTY says, so when will we get a live show but Guar style with you headbanging into metal while overclocking? Uh, also, you like being called Tech Jesus. It doesn't bother me. And uh, I don't think we are going to be doing that kind of show for you, unfortunately. You don't see any screws I've missed. Not unless there's one under the tape. Um, OK, let me just look at the top there. side, and then I think I'll just just yank hard, like uh, NDXT says. Are you talking about this? Uh, yeah, and that it's fabric tape next to it for the... Oh, this? Yeah. Uh, maybe. Let's take a look at that. Or do I have a um, spudger thing? Um, $5 from Christopher Baird. Uh, beyond seeing the results of the potential benchmark from the test and the fun factor, do these tests have any practical value? Nothing. Uh, yeah, they do. So earlier in the stream, we um, there's nothing under there. We did actually show the clock change behavior versus temperature, which is very useful to know. It kind of tells you what there is to gain or not with water cooling versus an air cooled card or a better air cooled card versus not. Um, yeah, it was just, just yank hard was the answer. Five dollars from Celio. Uh, I am not accepting a Strix 3080 as a donation. If any are lying around, don't oh, miss okay. out on this one-time offer. For five dollars? It's a good one-time offer. Man. I don't know. Unfortunately, I don't have a Strix, so I guess it won't work. <laughs> uh, Five dollars from Angle of Attack. Currently have a 1070K bottlenecking my 10700K. <laughs> really want a new GPU now. What should I do? A 1070. GTX 1070. I'm assuming that's what they meant. Yes. And they're asking, what should they? Uh, really want a new GPU? GPU now. What should I do? Uh, well, you can either wait for AMD, which we don't know what their performance is going to be yet. Um, so if you're feeling patient, it's you'll get the full picture if you wait. And if you're not feeling patient, then I guess, or if you really need a system, then I guess 3080. But uh, 10. 70 is still pretty good. It'll last you a little while longer. So I don't know anything about AMD's cards yet. I don't have them. I haven't tested them. But it doesn't hurt to see what the performance is. And it may influence the price in the market anyway. So uh, if you're feeling patient or like you can deal with it a little longer, I'd say wait. Um, especially with a 3070 around the corner. Uh, 99 cents from Sarah Reich. Thank you. Um, uh, $20 uh, dollars from Rodrigo Rocha de Toledo. Uh, good luck. Thank you. We needed it with Quake. So we were running, let me recap stuff for people for a second. Can you open that notepad file? It's got my overclock notes on it. Mm -hmm. So a little bit ago, we were doing Quake 2 RTX on um, uh, 8K resolution with liquid nitrogen. And we got a killer 12 to 13 FPS and had an improvement at one point of 16% to 14 FPS. So that's what we did the first part. We checked the frequency scale. And uh, let me look at my notes for that. So frequency scale at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, so below ambient for most people. We saw 20, 25 to 20, 40 megahertz, full auto everything. And then if you were to say run it normally, uh, 70 degrees, we're seeing 1935 megahertz. And I know with the stock cooler, we were seeing like 19, actually it was high 18s to low 19s uh, in the 80s or high 70s. So um, if you went with a water cooler, for example, you might be in the 50 to 60 range. 50 were at 1950 megahertz, 60 were at 1935 to 1960 megahertz, so 1960 or so for the high end. So you can get an improvement of, I don't know, maybe. 30, 40 megahertz by going water from uh, like a bad air cooler or something. 50 you max. Need a 3D accelerator card. 3D accelerator. <laughs> yeah. And we need a second GPU to work, is what we need. This paste is so dry, that's why I'm spending so long on this. If anyone's wondering, there's like dried P 
pieces everywhere on the silicon. Actually, it's like, I don't know if that's a uh, paste. Oh, no, it was paste. That was the driest paste I've ever moved. Wow. That's, everyone's got that this generation. All right. Uh, so let me do the other cooler now, and then we're going to do new paste. What's the next question? Uh, five pounds from Roman Bugrov. Uh, hey, Steve, any chance uh, you're doing some undervolting on the 3090 later? There's reports that undervolted 3090s can go 5 to 10% above stock while running cooler temps. Makes sense. Uh, generally, if you reduce the temperature, which can be done with undervolting or underpowering it, then your clocks will increase. So there's going to be a point where that's more positive than it is negative for sure. I don't have a plan right now to do that. We have so much. 30 series stuff up, I feel like people are going to start getting bored of it or uh, or just want to see something different. So we're probably going to do some case and cooler stuff shortly, like next week. And then I'm, I'll probably go back for 30 series stuff after that, especially after more people get the cards and have more targeted questions. And uh, just a quick update, we're almost done here. I'm just replacing the paste and then we're going to run um, Port Royal. See how close we can get to Jay's score. We're not going to beat it because he ran an air conditioner, but I want to see how close I can get with just normal air. Um, $5 from Kyler. Uh, am I correct in being very pleased that I held onto my 2080 Ti FTW3 hybrid instead of panic selling it during the <laughs> two times the 2080 Ti, one half the price crowd? Yeah, I definitely don't. Don't panic sell ever if you can avoid it. Look at how dry that paste is. All right. That's, that's right on to tank. You tell him. Uh, I think this is something you've addressed already, but uh, five dollars from Nick P. What do you think about the pause caps versus MLC? Yes. Okay. Talked about that a lot already, uh, so I am going to skip it. Sorry. I think, I think they probably heard the answer by now, too. Um, five dollars Australian from Andrew Alexandrov. Um, Pre-ordered a 3080. Will my 650 watt 80 plus gold power supply be enough? Planning on getting and R7 4700X when it comes out. I haven't found an exact answer yet. Uh, go through the specs again. 650 watt power supply. They're getting a 4700X when it comes out and they've pre-ordered a 3080. I have no idea what the 4000 series specs for power is gonna be. Um, if it's similar, then you're like under 150 boosted. Uh, and 3080, we know the power is in the 300s. And what was the current power supply spec? 650 watt, 80 plus uh, cool. That's, uh, I don't know. That's, you'll be on the inefficient side. It's on, yeah, be on the inefficient side, maybe like 750. But we don't know what the 4000 series is going to pull. And I don't, like if you're overclocking, that kind of changes the story a little bit. Yeah. Uh, the conservative answer is, I mean, they already own the power supply. So, so just wait. Yeah, yeah wait and, s and add up the power numbers when reviews are out and see if you need to upgrade. Um, Almost done on this reassembly. A uh, quick note, some of you may have noticed there's thermal putty on the, not pads, but putty on the MOSFET, or on the inductors, sorry. That's fine. Um, we're still going to have good enough contact for this, and I can replace it at another date. All thermal testing for this card is complete but I have not um, obviously published the video yet. Uh, $5 from Casey White. Uh, Hygiene recently invested in a Crosshair X570 for the PCIe Gen 4. Wanted to know what exact, what actually benefit, what benefit the 3080 gets from the generation pump? Um, Almost none. Generation 4, generation 3. Like a couple percent, uh, often within, or near, very near error. 3% is about the most we saw. Um, you'll see a huge difference in the PCI bandwidth test, <laughs> but that doesn't count. No games work like that. Um, 3090, I'm not sure. 3080 is very close, though. I kind of doubt that the 3090 will be much different. Um, $5 from Chris Evans. Steve, have you modded your OS at all? I assume no, but how much can an OS affect performance? Uh, OS affects performance a lot. I have not modded mine, but I mod the um, bench systems that we're using for anything competitive. There's a lot of deep load scripts out there. Careful what you run, obviously, from the internet when it's operating system level. Like, you don't want to install malware. But um, 
you can gain, I don't know, like, you can gain in low double digit points in Port Royal with mods if you're more on the CPU side, even on the GPU side a little bit. So, haven't changed mine, but like a lot of times you're removing Windows Store, OneDrive, you're removing all those stupid games things like Candy Crush. I'll even remove like the calculator, <laughs> which don't want to do for a normal system, but uh, yeah, there's a lot to be gained. Uh, $10 from Luscious3174. Hey Steve, can you explain using Vaseline for insulation versus spraying the PCB with conformal coating? Love the channel, keep up the awesome job. Both are good. Conformal coating is potentially a little bit better, a little more permanent, uh, a little more resilient to moving the card around. But um, I do prefer, I'm tempted to slap a huge thermal pad on the back of this thing. <laughs> Let's do it. I do prefer, oh, there's a heat pipe in there. I just noticed, didn't see that till now. Do prefer um, using Vaseline because it's easy and uh, uh, we have it. I know what I'm getting out of it, stuff like that. Um. Five dollars from Nighthog. Steve, you've been working hard since the launch, and we all appreciate you. Have a drink on me. Well, thank you. It has been a very long, well, probably the, the most work for a launch I've done in, a, in quite a while. We had a lot to cover with this one. So much appreciated. Uh, I'm going to cut a piece of thermal pad and just shove it right on the back of the inductors. And um, just kind of hope that it improves our performance a little bit. Um, $25 from i3 Lack. I, I guess you can read that black. Um, yes. Will cards from other companies scale better than FE using liquid nitrogen? They will if they have a removed, if there's no power or there's less power limit on it. FE were pretty power limited. Some companies will have a higher clocking or a higher um, power limit on their cards, especially once you get into like Strix, FTW3, stuff like that. So, yes. Um, $10 from Russ Ludwig, sending some dollars for tots after the stream. Um, I wish. I think all the places are going to be closed <laughs> tomorrow, though. Question, uh, if installing 32 gigabytes of RAM using two kits of 16 gigabytes, okay. um, 8 by 2 yeah. should each kit stay paired, kit 1 in channel A, kit 2 in channel B? Good question. I would manually map the timings in BIOS so that you never have to worry about it. You know, this thing, I don't know where the spudger is top of my head. <laughs> it would make this a lot easier. Um. I keep letting go of the damn plastic right when I'm about to pull this thing off. All right, there we go. Got it. Got a knife. Nothing. No, that'll, chat will not like the, <laughs> <laughs> like a knife next to the PCB. That's what I just did. I'm sure they're happy about it. Um, Christopher Baird, $5. When will we see the benchmarks for 3090 and SLI? <laughs> I tried. Um, I put this on the MOSFETs instead. I just noticed there's holes in the PCB here. It might be for breathing, but I'm not sure if it's just for ground or breathing or what. I'm going to put this on the back of the FETs, get some heat away. Um, 3090 SLI, as soon as it works, I, I don't know. It seems like it's disabled at a driver level right now. We're not really sure. But Patrick and I were both trying to get that to work yesterday. Um. Five pounds from Josh Hamlink. Uh, do you reckon the 3080 Founders Edition will be the quietest card out of the box due to the massive heat sink? Love what you did. No, it is not. Um, I just filmed, was it 3080 or 90 they asked about? Uh, 3080. 3080. I just filmed a video about a 3080 partner card. It's the Eagle. And it actually kind of surprised me, despite being very, very power limited. Not a good overclocker, that card. but. Uh, the heat sink and cooling solution surprised me. So, excellent question, because FE is actually very competitive this time, but uh, it is still not the best. The MSRP $700 in theory Eagle that I just tested is in fact better than it in um, just about, about every aspect of thermals and noise, uh, memory included. So, uh, no, it's still, still not the best. Better, but not there yet. Uh, $10 from Matt Thayer, congrats on 1 million, good on you for not speaking on a topic until you were fully informed. Oh yeah, that's about the capacitors, yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't really, I, I know the other people have probably read about the cap stuff, but I have not, and I'd rather not put out bad information if I haven't 
read everything yet. Uh, $10 from Lost Minds. Any thoughts on the plastic backplate on the MSI cards? Bad for rigidity and or cooling? Yes, <laughs> both. Um, do they really use plastic? I don't know if that's on Aventus or what. Plastic backplate's terrible because it's, it's an insulator. You're just insulating the heat. So you're worse off than if you did no backplate at all. So that's a, a very strange and yet not entirely unsurprising decision. Um, DRW98, $10 says, keep your thermometer from powering down with the 5 slash APO button. Oh, thank you. I was actually not aware of that despite having used that thing for many years. <laughs> APO button, okay, good to know. Um, $5 Australian from Steve Reed. Um, can we get confirmation that the FTDW3 3080 card has the top tier power delivery like the ASUS Tough does? I'd be happy to wait for a the Strix, if not. Yes, you can get third party confirmation. However, I did not look at the VRM just now. Um, I can have Buildzoid look at it. We have photos of the FTW3, I need to send him. And he's filmed our FE uh, PCB breakdown already. That's going up over the next few days. So yes, we will have confirmation from you, uh, but it may take a week or so for the Buildzoid video to be up on the FTW3. Mm -hmm. And we're just a quick update here for all of you. We are almost done reassembling this, at which point we'll be doing some Port Royal testing and um, play some initial scores versus Jay before we break out more exotic cooling. Like he's, he was on an air conditioner that had him at I think about 11 degrees Celsius, so he is absolutely in an advantaged position because we're not going to do that today. Uh, but I do have some ideas for next time. Uh, I think I know your answer to this one already. Uh, Five dollars from Zaj. Um, please benchmark 7680 by 1600 or similar 2 by 4K. Nobody has tested above 4K but below 8K that I can find. Uh, I don't have like a, a great, I don't know, reason to do that, I guess, is unfortunately the answer. Not that I don't want to, but we are so slammed right now that that's one of those, like, I guess you can extrapolate in between, multiply the pixels and figure out kind of the pixel count and try and extrapolate based on the relative scaling at 4K and what we showed at 8K on the 3090. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think I'm going to be testing non-standard resolutions, especially at that scale right now. So sorry about that. We only did 8K because of that NVIDIA marketing claims. Um, Five dollars from Foxhound. Thanks for all your great in-depth videos on hardware. You guys are the best. Thank you. <laughs> we'll um, keep working on it. This is fully reassembled, so we'll do a couple more of these, and uh, then I'm going to get to overclocking it. I do need to clean out the, the board a bit. There's a bunch of Vaseline on it from the liquid nitrogen stuff. So I clean that off. This is an Asus Apex board, by the way. Really good for overclocking. What's the next one? Uh, $5 from Christian Manzanedo. At announcement, I assumed the 8K would be more than borderline, considering the two times premium for 10 to 20% gains oh, in yeah. average use. Very bold of NVIDIA. Yeah, definitely very bold is one word for it. That was uh, a risky play for NVIDIA to do the marketing they did, and it did not work out. So they're, they're <laughs> they'll hopefully learn from it. And uh, AMD, damn it, you better pay attention, because if AMD screws this one up, like there's not a better scenario for them to be handed by their competitor right now. Um, $25 Australian from Jean-Paul Pittman. Uh, please treat Snowflake to a dime bag of catnip, then you can get some sleep while she trips out. Meow, meow. I don't think Snowflake's the obstacle to sleep here. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Snowflake uh, also s stole some of a bacon, egg, and cheese sandwich earlier, so she's pretty happy right now. <laughs> um, you may have already gotten this one, I'm not sure. Uh, $100 from Sebastian Bereznik. Wow, yeah. Resnowitz? I think I may. I, th I did get that one. OK, yes. I, I, did you also same? have trouble? Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, giving back for all I've gotten out of your channel. Thank you. Um, uh, yes, thank you. 14 of a mysterious currency from Jose. Uh, what, you don't use DSR up to 8K in every game? 
You know, maybe I should. I really liked that 12 FPS experience. Uh, it felt like, like you know how film is a lot of times 24, and you know how like the original Charlie Chapman movies were like 14 FPS. Like that's really you can't see higher than 14 FPS. That's why 100 years ago they filmed that 14 FPS. So I really want to play at 8K so I can have the true film experience. <laughs> And be like, Steve, yes, you can see over 12 FPS. You can see 24. <laughs> Clear. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> cinematic. That's right. Uh, I want to play Quake cinematically. <laughs> One euro from MABCC. Thank you. Thank you. Mm. So this is, I guess I'll walk through the setup, setup here, and uh, we'll get some clocks on this thing, and then I'll go back to Super Chat. Um, I guess, Patrick, if you want to mute your line, or actually just cut the, mute it first, and then you can turn it off, and then I may call you back out for assistance with those in a bit. Thank you. So that was, uh, that was Patrick joining me. He's been working on a case review today, but we're going to let him get back to working on that. Someone says, 24 FPS because it's 12 FPS per eye. You know, I'm not an eye doctor, but that does make a lot of sense. Never thought of it that way. 12 per eye. All right, let's get rid of, so we're gonna go to 1080 so that it's visible to chat, to stream. Here goes some overclocking with the 3080 on an air cooler. I need to get rid of DLSS. I have some optimizations in NVIDIA control panel and in the operating system to help with our scores. However, that does sadly mean no more 8K. Is this mic blow getting blown into by the, uh, a little bit. Let's see if I can reposition this. Maybe back here is okay. That should be all right. Jacob Freeman from EVGA is calling me. Uh, let me mute and answer and then. Okay, unmuted, Andrew. All right, I just got an update from EVGA. Um, on the POSCAP question, they saw that all of you were asking about it, so they went and did, sent me an update. But, yeah, I know there's no audio. I, was, I muted it intentionally. Uh, so <laughs> let me look up their statement. They have an official one. He did fill me in on, in on the issue, but I need to see, um, see what the official uh, on-record statement is. Let's see, Twitter, EVGA. So this is a POSCAP update. Let me send out another link while we're on Twitter anyway. So let's say about to overclock the 3090 FTW3 and Port Royal to get some basic scores in. Okay. All right, so let me read their update. Let's see, what does EVGA say? Audio's back, I'm assuming? Yes. Uh, no, they did not know beforehand to answer that. So this is about the uh, POSCAP question. Uh, official statement from EVGA went up 24 minutes ago. I'll read it word for word. They said, hi all, recently there has been some discussion about the EVGA RTX 3080 series. 
So right now our mass production QC testing, we discovered a full six POS caps solution cannot pass the real world application testing. It took almost a week of R&D effort to find the cause and reduce the POS caps to four and add 20 MLCC caps prior to shipping production boards. This is why the EVGA 3080 FTW3 series was delayed at launch. Oh, I actually knew about this, but I didn't say anything because I couldn't yet. Um, this was a different thing I knew about, though. I'll get to that in a second. Uh, there were no six POS cap production EVGA 3080 FTW3 boards shipped. So that's the key takeaway here. There aren't any in the wild. I do, however, have one. Uh, let's see. But due to time crunch, some of the reviewers were sent a pre-production version with six POS caps. We are working with those reviewers directly to replace their boards with production versions. That's what they just told me about on the phone a second ago. EVGA 3080 XC3 series with five POS caps plus 10 MLCC solution is matched with the XC3 spec without issues. So it sounds like the XC3 is, is unaffected according to EVGA. Uh, it says, also note that we have updated the product pictures to reflect production components that shipped to gamers and enthusiasts, i.e. customers, not reviewers, since day one of product launch. They say once you have received the card, you can compare for yourself. EVGA stands behind its products. So that's their official statement. Um, couple things here. Uh, so I was looking into yesterday an issue with boosting, with frequency going over 2,000 megahertz on an air-cooled card. I was not able to reproduce any issues with it in a severe way yet. I had one crash the desktop with that. I don't know if it's related, though. I need to look at the back of, the, of that card and see. Um, so we had one CTD issue, but we're not anywhere close to the research we needed to do something with it. So obviously, that hasn't gone anywhere. That was a, uh, like an over 2,000 megahertz thing was what I was looking for, basically cards that were boosted too high. What EVGA is talking about is a physical hardware change, not a vBIOS thing, which I was looking at the vBIOS. They're talking about physical hardware. So what I was just told on the phone by EVGA is that my, is this one of them? Yep. This is a pre-production FTW3, and let me put this here. If you look at the back, you'll see what he's talking about in that, what they're talking about in that statement. So that is a six POS cap solution. They're saying going down to four plus the MLCC changes resolves the issue, allegedly. Uh, we never had crashing problems with this, but we were, well, I overclocked it on air too, on stream. I don't remember having any serious issues. That does, that's not to say they wouldn't have come up. Uh, so the problem, as they actually state, is there's some specific applications where these issues emerge. Uh, Heaven, I know, is one of them because I was able to get that issue to happen on a different card, but it only happened once so far, so we haven't fully researched it. Now, that was a gaming X trio, for the record. But So I know Heaven was having issues. I don't know if other ones did. But anyway, that's what they're talking about. That's pre-production. So this... If the statement's accurate, uh, which I have no reason to suspect it isn't, but you know, obviously viewers, customers will know. If the statement's accurate, it sounds like none ever made it to uh, customers. And one thing that EVGA was talking to me about before launch of the 3080 was they weren't fully sure on what they wanted the vBIOS to be set to yet for the frequency because of stability. And if you look, this isn't a secret, because if you look at their FTW3 page, uh, or the, um, what's it called, archive.org version of that page, then you should see a TBD for the frequency. That's why. So I'm wondering if the real reason for the stability issue they're talking about was, in fact, not frequency, but was related to this cap issue. Anyway, that's the statement they provided. I don't know about the rest of the companies. I'll have to ask around. So that should, uh, that should answer those uh, questions. Yes, that card was on air and on LN2 for overclocking. So it's been definitely gone through a lot, but um, we only did a few. I only did really Port Royal. How did Gaming Benchmarks on it too, though? So I don't know. We, maybe not the right games to trigger the issue, or just luck or timing or whatever. Okay, let's um, let's go get going on this. So Port Royal is what I want to run. I'm gonna cut off super chats here. Don't send any more super chats. You want answered? I'm gonna add a note to the stream. Let's see. Uh, no more new super chats. I will answer the ones that are in there now, but no more new ones after 9 39 p.m. EST. Uh, let's add sent so people aren't confused. Sent after 9 39 EST. Please. Okay. 
Uh, let's unhide that layer. Uh, it's visible. Okay, cool. All right, so let's run Port Royal and Precision. So we're unlocked on power. I'm going to go ahead and do just a 50 offset on clocks. Let's start at 700 mem and work our way up from there. And how's ICX look? Temperatures look good. I was just checking that because, uh, so the FTW3 has some, um, has I think nine thermistors, NTC style thermistors around the board. Those give you temperatures of things like memory, uh, power. And the reason I was looking at this is because we just reassembled the card. So I want to make sure there's no issues. So that's applied. I'm going to close precision. It does impact performance to have it open. We're going to run Port Royal. This is our first entries into the Rip J competition. J currently is on an air conditioner. Uh, and yes, confirmed live on stream, the, the POSCAP issue. Um, oh, I'll paste the state. Someone's asking where the statement is. Let me paste that. It's on their forum. I'll paste this in chat. Oh, nice. Slow mode doesn't apply to me. <laughs> so <laughs> that's in there. Um, let's see. So we're getting a run in for overclocks finally. Well, we had some with Quake 2 and stuff earlier, but that's with uh, an air-cooled card, nothing crazy. Why are, where's that question? Why are both of the extra fans drawing air away from the card? Oh, thanks. I meant to spin this one around. I appreciate that. This is this one I wanted here. Okay. Uh, that one's pulling air away from the GPU and the back plate. Uh, let me do a super chat while that's running. So, Wishbone said Spartan Console has updated their site with a new prototype controller and promises a roadmap and six month updates. I don't know, what, I don't remember what that is, Spartan Console. Oh, Sega Console Prototype. Okay, cool. I'll look into that. Uh, let's see. Christian Logan says, thanks for shipping things so damn quick. Mouse mat, teardown cube came quickly. Pint glass and signed mouse pad already on the way. Glad to hear that. Our shipping guy has been completely slammed. So I'm glad he's, uh, he's, he's managing to keep up. Is that the official open bench fan mount? Yes, a screwdriver through the hole in the fan is in fact the way that we do that. I, so I wanted this fan. Oh, actually that's good. I can feel warm air coming out of it. So it's actually doing stuff. I wanted this fan over here. Uh, pulling towards me, but I was worried about pick up on the mic. The reason I wanted it here is because these fins, if you saw our video today, we talk about this with the uh, Strix. These fins are spitting air up and also down because they're vertically oriented. A lot of the air ends up in the slot down there and under the card and it'll kind of recirculate. So I'm trying to get some airflow. I wanted a fan here to pull the air away uh, because there's some clearance under the card there to get it out from under the card. But this works well too because I can feel the heat coming off the back of the GPU. So. That's good. Here's our first score officially. 14,156 without even trying. So that is well past. Uh, Joe did a 14,069 with our liquid nitrogen cooled RTX 3080. So that is well past where we were uh, just, oh, what was that even? Just a few days ago, a little under a week ago. So that's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> these cards are ridiculous at least for competitive stuff. Let's go ahead and clock it a little more. What's that, 14156? Someone says that RGB on the card is blowing my mind. <laughs> Let's go up to 750 on the mem. Oops, that is one. We don't want one, we want 750. Okay, close and run. I feel so like, so weird not having to manage a liquid nitrogen pot right now. It's very strange. There's literal ice in the uh, LTT bottle. So weird. Normally, normally I'm managing temperature or something. I answer stuff while I do that. Uh, let's see. The Mad Hatter says, looks like you've been MLC'd. That was from 815, so that was before the update. Uh, Marco Schaff says, let's pay the testing equipment off. Did I see this one before? No. Love the GN mouse, Matt. Uh, Christmas presents for the nerds in my family. Keep up the great work. 
Thank you. Much appreciated. Glad you like the mouse mat too. I'm just putting back what we can save here. You know, Linus didn't intend it this way, but the fact that his bottle didn't get a ice on the rim is actually beneficial for this overclocking. Because then it doesn't um, turn into water, so I'll have to tell him that's kind of funny. All right, where's the, there it is. Save that for another time. <clears throat> Let's see. So, if I use a vertical mount on my 3080, will I get a performance hit? It depends on how close it is to the glass. Uh, Mar Marcelo, currency R200, thank you. It says, greetings from Brazil. Greetings. Always cool to see people from all around. Uh, RTX 3080 is still in pre-release in all stores that I've looked so far, and the price is disgusting. Quote, uh, the RTX 3090 is just a dream. I'm currently on a, quote, an old 1070 Ti and 3700X. Oh, that's a good CPU, though. Uh, waiting for the 3060 or Ti or second tier RDNA 2 for an upgrade. Keep up the great work. Yeah, so like I said earlier, now is a pretty good time to build a computer. Someone was asking about that. And uh, it's, I mean, it's good because, have you flashed me BIOS yet? Yes. Uh, it's good because GeForce has launched and is like, I don't know, well, a month away from announcement. So maybe two from launch. And then there's uh, obviously the CPUs getting announced in too. It's a really good time. So yeah, if you're, I'd say you're, you're playing it right if you're looking for an RDNA 2. Uh, second tier or a 3060 or TI. Let's see. Get the next one in a second. 14170, that is in fact an improvement. Let's keep going and see how far we can get up the board. What's the leaderboard right now? 3D Mark, Hall of Fame, Port Royal. I should not be able to beat Jay's score tonight. We're going to see how close I can get, though, because he had his card at 11 degrees Celsius, and we just showed in frequency scaling first half of the stream what that does for you. So where is 14170? That is currently seventh place. Is it seventh? Sixth? Is that eighth? Eighth place. So we're going to go for seventh next, 14236. I'm going to go for seventh place. Uh, make sure I'm reading that right. Yes, I am. Yeah. Seventh place is our next target. Let's go up. Uh, let's do 100 or 50 at a time. I mean, I find that it scales a little better in score if you go 50 at a time rather than to the highest possible. So we're going to see if we can jump that up incrementally. <clears throat> Uh, let's see, looking at the chats, enough said, says my Mac came in today, thanks Steve, well, glad you got it, thanks for picking one up, uh, like I said, there were, I don't know if they're still there, but I put some mouse mats in stock on the store a little bit earlier, uh, we didn't have a ton of them, but we had enough for at least the stream, yes, there's still decent inventory there, so store.gamersaccess.net if you want to pick up the mouse mat, um, I don't think I have one out here. Oh yeah, I do. Is that running? Still, oh, it's still surviving at 850 offset or 800 offset. There's the mouse mat we're talking about. Also the gold foil shirt I'm wearing is uh, on the store. So yeah, thanks for picking that up for the people who said you got one. Uh, we do have some more on the store, but then we gotta wait for a restock after that. Not too far away. So currently 14,170 points, which has us close to seventh place. We're gonna get as close to J as we can without an air conditioner. Someone just asked uh, what the benefit is of the air conditioner. Why is that significant? And that's a great question. So earlier we did this demo. I'll recap it very briefly for you. Uh, so at 20 degrees Celsius, I think Jay, I don't know what he was running, but I remember he showed 11 on the screen. So 20 degrees Celsius for the GPU was running 2025 to 2040 megahertz without overclocking, full stock. Whereas... 60 degrees Celsius, it was 1935 to 1960. So once you're at that scale of things, that extra frequency makes a big difference and you need to go cold once you hit like power limits and even if you bypass those, eventually you're gonna need to go cold to sustain. So that's why it's a, an advantage to go cold. But Jay and I agreed not to use liquid nitrogen until the finale. So technically 
We didn't agree on if you can use liquid nitrogen pulled into the fans to cool it, which would effectively be an air conditioner. <laughs> but uh, I will try to avoid that. Unless we're like so close that maybe that would do it. All right. Uh, let's see. Questions. David says, overclock like a pro. Use the new sweatband set at LTT store. Uh, Philip Borg. No message. Thank you. Uh, Michael A.T. says, will you review the new Lian Lee Galahad 360 AO? Yes, we are working on that. We have the test in. Twisted Biscuits Gaming, my mouse mat is coming with my Odyssey G9 on the same day. Nice. I don't... Oh, that's that monitor, isn't it? That's a score regression. We don't want to see that. So that's maybe an unstable stepping in the memory. Uh, you can go... You can overclock past it sometimes, though. I think there should be more room yet on this card. Let's, uh, oh, I did not, did I really not do that? We need the fans at 100% for sure. That's going to get us, there we go, that's a lot better. That'll get us some, some performance. Let's go to 850 on mem. 100% fan speed will help us a good deal. Hopefully this memory stepping is stable. Now let's run. Let's see if we can go up a bit more. Uh, column, column photo, photo says, well, removing the glass panel in front of the fans on the Crystal 570X greatly improved performance. Uh, I haven't seen thermals in, for that case. We did review the 570X a long time ago, and it was actually pretty okay. Um, that said, yeah, removing the glass will improve performance. I don't know that I would do it, because I don't like having spare parts floating around. But it would it'd be easy enough to try. You could just run it under a fixed workload, Prime 95 or something, and... Uh, Get a, a number with the panel on, let it hit set steady state and hold it there. Don't move it. Like, don't change any of the software. Pull the panel off while it's running if you can do so safely. I don't know if the screws are on the outside or inside, but outside easy enough. And see if your steady state temperature starts going down over time. Uh, Viola Russell says, why would NVIDIA send a production video card to a company called Gamers Nexus? They should have sent it to Production Nexus. Yes, you're you're right. Our, our sister company, Production Nexus. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, I think we all know that NVIDIA was marketing it as a gaming card, unfortunately, for them. Uh, Jack says, Hey, Steve, have you ever considered a tech or game journalism internship program, i.e. allowing university students write reviews for your site in exchange for academic credit? I don't even know how that would work. I know someone would be interested, dot, dot, dot. No, right now we don't do anything like that, unfortunately. I am so strapped for time, I don't don't really have much time for training uh, in, a, in a program like that, unfortunately. Sorry about that. Uh, Gabriel Taffy sends a winky face. Dave Leviathan Prim, good to see you back, says, hello, GN. I see PSU Steve is still LN2 banned. Yes, yes it is. Uh, there's a power supply with a sticker on it that says Steve. And we don't use it for LN2 because it has a, um, an OCP that we hit with it, overcurrent protection with it. So a lot of times with power supplies that are multi-rail, uh, they will have lower overcurrent protections than like this one, which is a very, in the best way possible, dumb power supply. It doesn't try to protect much of anything uh, because it's an overclocking power supply specifically. So those OCP multi-rail ones, you can change them to single rail, but sometimes they lose that setting if you restart or if they lose AC. Are the GN signed bearded hardware mouse pads going out this week? Yes, they should be on the way already. Most of them, not all of them have shipped yet, but they have started going out. That is a higher score than before. 14198. That's good. That's an improvement. Um, let's go ahead and run another one with a higher clock. And we're getting close to seventh place now with that scoring. It's not far. I think that's 14238. I don't know if we'll hit that, but we'll try. That fan speed helped for sure. Let's try 900 offset on them. So far, this is pretty good memory. If we can get a 1,000 or above, I'd be very happy with the memory. Uh, let's see the Port Royal leaderboard for perspective. KP is at 16,673, Kingpin number one score. I'd love to put this under Allen 2 right now, but I'm, 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 I'm holding back because Jay and I said we'd save Allen 2 for the finale, and we want to iterate through like water, chilled water, and have some fun with uh, messing around with hardware in ways that we did last time. So got a couple ideas too to add things in this time, make it different. So we're holding back on that. The highest, I think, air score is from V Manuel GM at 14,674. 
Jay is in third at 14.633 with, I think, his air conditioner, unless he's done more. Uh, and then the score we're trying to beat right now is 14,236. So we're at 14,198. We're very close. Okay. Uh, Ian McDonald, can we overclock a tater tot next stream? I I don't... I don't is a tater tot close enough to a potato where you can still power things with it? Like you can make a potato clock? Patrick, can we get a bunch of tater tots and make a tater tot powered computer? Yes. Uh, Patrick says yes, so I'm going to trust him on it. Like that does sound like a Linus video. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's see. Someone says you can do it, make it colder. Yes. Uh, I need to probably do water next without going to LN2. Uh, what's your thoughts on negative pressure airflow? It works well sometimes. The H500 surprisingly worked pretty well with it. It depends on the design of the case. And it does mean that you've got less control over the dust intake. Uh, it has in interesting implications for the GPU where with negative pressure, bottom, so like GPUs like this, and you got PCIe slots with hopefully holes in them or something. If you have negative pressure up here, the air will get pulled in through the PCIe slot, through the back of the case, even without a fan there, because your GPU has fans on it. They're probably spinning. They're going to pull air in, and if, even if they weren't, the negative pressure set up on the top should um, dictate that air would go in. So you can actually end up with better GPU thermals with a negative pressure setup in some cases, like an H500. Uh, Lynn Kornick, what CPU is this? 10900K F, actually, KF. Dark Lord Catbug says, <laughs> any thoughts on the 20 gigabyte 3080 variants that are rumored? Should I wait for that or get a 10 gigabyte for 5120 by 1440? Which I think that might be below or right around 4K. Uh, and says, good luck with the tweaking on the overclocks. Thank you. I don't know anything about the 20 gigabyte card yet. I have seen the rumors. I do not have any official information. I don't have one. So I don't know. It's probably going to exist. Uh, the rumors thus far have been really accurate this generation. That's a big jump. 14 230. We're six points away from tied with seventh place. Very close. I feel like I could just rerun this a few times and probably get there. But let's let's try a higher overclock on the memory. What I'm doing right now is pushing memory before core. And to go back to the 20 gigabyte question, uh, buyer weight is tough when I don't. I mean, like the fact the card's rumored is good news because those have been pretty accurate, but we don't know when and availability is going to be rough. I don't know. It's tough. I don't think 20 is going to really impact you for gaming, to be honest. Uh, you're at a, yeah, I think you'll be okay at that because you're pretty close to 4K resolution, which was doing fine on 10. I think if you're doing like 3D art and stuff like that, it might, it's probably worth waiting. How do you feel about reports of partner cards failing? We just uh, just talked about that, actually. It's a little bit back. I read the EBJ statement and talked about it a little bit. Someone says, this is like putting NOS in a Lamborghini. Yes, but there's no NOS in it. There's no liquid nitrogen either. It's actually it's like putting air into a Lamborghini. Uh, Davy Jones, congrats on having more viewers than the WAN show right now. Oh, really? Uh, they probably just ended by now anyway. Sorry, Linus. Although he splits between multiple. I bet he had more if you add up like Twitch and everything. Uh, James Thomas, we need to see a reviewer deploy 16K RTX 3D Solitaire benchmark for current and future GPU benchmarks to show when we've reached 16K gaming. That, speaking of the WAN show, does sound like Linus. He's got a 16K setup. I do not. Uh, you need a lot of 4K monitors for that. Uh, so right now... What I want to see is the frames going into the low 7,000. The frame count will give us an idea for where performance is. The CPU side, I'm going to explain this bench a little bit. So we're running a 10900KF. I currently have it set to 5.3 gigahertz. VRM is feeling really good. Man, that's not even hot to the touch, so that's great news. Uh, so we have an Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 360 on it. It's adequate for 5.3. The biggest problems you'll run into with uh, Port Royal is going to be all GPU. So once you're at like 5.3, you're pretty much good on the CPU side. We can push a little higher, but for now we're going to run this. 
Memory is this is a two dim board, only two slots. It helps with memory overclocking. Currently have it set to XMP, 4,000 megahertz. Uh, I think we're at 15 or 16 for the timings, and I can do more tweaking on that. We would do that in an upload or another stream, though. Today I'm focusing on GPU. And then the board is an Apex. Uh, so the, again, the dim choice, only having two dims is intentional. I wanted this to be easier to overclock if it comes down to the memory. And then GPU is an FTW3. And there's a good amount of heat getting pulled off the back of the card right now. So we're only using air, and we're getting fairly close, I would say, to Jay's sub-ambient scores. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, that's intake. This is just pulling off the back. And uh, I shoved a, a thermal pad in there between the, the plate and the card, too, when we rebuilt. Oh, man. I think that's a slight regression. So let's push the score up a little more. Sometimes, like I said before, you see that with memory. It could also be run to run variants of that level, too. But memory is, uh, let's try a little higher. So sometimes memory, certain straps or steppings will will perform worse than lower ones. And you just got to keep moving it around until you find something that's stable. I think there's a little more in the core as well. Oh, yeah, someone's asking for clarity when I was talking about H500. I was talking about the um, NZXT one. Someone says, I can't believe in chat. Says, I can't believe I missed the first two hours. Let me recap the the most fun parts of it, and then you'll have to go back in the archive to catch the rest. But So first we did overclock stepping on a 3090 with liquid nitrogen. Actually, not stepping for overclocks, but rather a... Uh, well, that is still very cold. So this was with liquid nitrogen. And it's the 3090 founder's card. So we did frequency scaling on this with LN2 to see how much does the frequency change strictly from cold and nothing else. And the recap is at like 20 degrees Celsius we were doing. I, I should have gone a bit lower with that too. I stopped too soon, I think, but we wanted to get going on other stuff. Uh, yeah, we're getting to the super chats. Give me time. Um, 20, 25, 20, 40 megahertz at 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. And at 70 for reference to 1920, 1935. Uh, so quite a bit of scaling just this looks like a 100 megahertz at the high end if you're sub-ambient for most people. Well, definitely sub-ambient because that's not ambient temperature, that's GPU. So that's the range you see. And then we played Quake for a little bit, time demo Quake, and uh, 12 FPS, 8K. <laughs> All right, Super Chats. Cloud says, what kind of beer will you buy with this? Legal disclaimer, this is for beer use only. Uh, I will, if it is for beer use only, I will have to offload it to someone else. But... I, I'm sure I can find someone who works here who will take that. Uh, a duck on quack says, with the help of your videos, I built my first PC at the start of the month. Now I am able to build my fourth. Wow, that's crazy uh, fast acceleration. Hello, and thanks from Scotland. Hello, well, first of all, first PC, the start of September, and you're now about to build your fourth, is you're like getting, a, what was it called in, in MMOs? Speed leveled. Getting like speed leveled in PC building. That's pretty cool. Um, someone's asking about capacitors, I think. Answered that oh, on the back of the FTW3. Uh, let me let this run finish. It's about to. Uh, yeah, that's awesome. Congrats on your, your fourth build already. Karen Mizra, for someone who mostly plays older games, Destiny 2 at 1440 on a 1080 Ti, will a 3080 be worth the upgrade? You'll get a a bit of, yeah, you'll still get like 40% uplift at 1440 if you're GPU bound. If you're CPU bound, then no. That is five points away from seventh place. We're so close. And this is just on air, so uh, it's getting, that's getting closer each run. I feel like, again, I could probably rerun it. Tempted to just do that, but let's see how the memory does. Maybe we should do a core at this point. Let's do 75 for core. Let me look at the back of that card. This one's got four caps on it. We're good here. For the person who's worried about that. Okay. Benchmark. Port Royal. It's now 25 higher on core. Let's see if it survives. Again, by which I mean not crash. Uh, Stoven, I got yours, and thanks again for that. Hugely appreciated. Jack says, Jack R says, go buy yourself a funnel. I think that was when I was doing it at liquid nitrogen pours. Did it crash? Nope. Okay, nice. 
they would like freeze. Uh, a person, this is from 824 by the way, so we're quite a bit back, but I'm working on it. A person says, push two volts, kill the card. Even if I wanted to, I don't have voltage control, unfortunately. Although I should probably increase that to see if it helps at all. I uh, don't have voltage control without a voltage control module externally or a mod on it, a hard mod. But I do want to get into those. Let's see. Blendinator. <laughs> Blendinator says beer, exclamation point. Good to see you back, Blendinator. Of course, Andrew, a big fan of Blender, is probably wondering why you didn't give that super chat money to Blender. Because he wanted to see more development on it. Uh, Gulag Kane, no message. VC Jester, Jester. Now you, uh, I'll skip that one. <laughs> but I now understand why he said, thanks for putting up with my jokes. Uh, VC Jester is a uh, regular on Patreon too. It's good to see you there. Philip Borg, I have a golden sample 295X2. Would any LN2 pot fit? There's definitely ones that do fit. I don't remember the hole spacing on that. Look up the hole spacing for a 295X2. You can probably find water cooling block guides for it that have the whole spacing recorded. And then uh, you might have to look at old inventory, but you can start with um, kingpin cooling LN2 pots, what we used earlier. There's maybe, they, he might still have brackets for it. Uh, he didn't do AMD since he works at EVGA, but there might be brackets. So you could email them to ask that. Uh, Der Bauer has had LN2 pots dating back quite a while, so he'd be a, a good, probably, actually, I'd probably check him first. And then, who else? EK actually made Allen 2 pots for a while around that era, maybe a little after, so they might have something else. You might have to get a custom bracket made, I'm not sure. Oh, Blendinator says, because I'm employed by them. That's cool. Oh, nice. What do we even do? That's like the highest score that I've seen so far on this card. That's higher than my, um, oh, I typed in the wrong number, but whatever. 14341. Higher than the pretest I ran. Wow, that's awesome. Where is that on the scoreboard? Uh, 14341, so I saved the score, we can upload it after the stream. That's cool. I, I'm happy with that. That puts us in um, fifth place. Top five at number five. So we're the last of top five. <laughs> Uh, just with air, nothing crazy. So we got two fans on it, but it's not like it's sub-ambient. And I uh, got a good overclock. So I'm, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. That's, that's much better than I thought we would get today. Let's, let's see if the memory will do any more. That was actually a core overclock, not mem even. So I don't think there's more room in core, but we can try it. I think at this point we're at like five megahertz increments. Let's do 1050 mem and just see if the score regresses. So I have saved that, 14341, that's awesome. Man, nice. Very happy with that. Uh, let's see, someone says you get more power from the FE card. I don't, I haven't checked that yet, but uh, I do know that, um, I do know that I can get a VBIOS for this one that will give me unlocked power. So I wanna start here. And also the cooling solution's better. So we're gonna be able to bring temperature down more, and get more frequency out of it. Okay, is the 3090 Trio a good card and does it overclock well? I have not tested it, I don't have one of those. I've got the 3080 though that we're gonna work on. Can it run Crisis at 4K? Almost certainly. But, can it run Crisis at 8K? I don't think so. <laughs> That's the real question now. How much did Jay have? So Jay had, I think, unless he's updated it, which is possible, I think he was running, let me check, I think he was running an air conditioner. I wonder if he would answer if I called him. Uh, I think he was running an air conditioner, and he's at 14,633. And when I say running an air conditioner, I mean he had a cardboard funnel hooked up to an air conditioner, like, like here. So... Uh, that is a frequency, so we, this was a crash, but we'll try again. So that was a, a frequency benefit for sure, but we're gonna see, um, we're gonna see how close we can get without doing any mods, and then probably water is gonna be my first one, and then chilled water after that, I would bet. Try 1100. So that last one was a crash. 
how quickly does this cool down? Uh, that was pretty quick. I was going to see if we, could, we waited another minute if it would be beneficial to it. Let's see. So, what's chat looking like? Uh, yes, that is correct. Drivers are not fully optimized yet. That's definitely true. It's still pretty early. Uh, let's see. Someone said, I got an email from someone who I was just checking to see if I had anything from the board partners. It says, I tried putting a couple chats in during the stream that got instantly buried. Maybe I'm understanding this wrong, but I thought you selected four times DSR on a video control panel. If the native resolution of the monitor is 4K, wouldn't the 12 FPS you're getting really be 16K? Um, I thought how four times DSR in that case was 8K. I'd have to go back and look at what we did. We ran a, we were running this monitor. We had it set to 7680 by 4320p is the better name for it. And that would be like 8K uh, desktop resolution. Okay, let's see if I've got anything from, I was looking to see if EVGA has sent anything official out, but I think their, I think their forum post is the official post. Yeah, it is, okay. I was just seeing if they had a, a formal press statement or not on that MLCC caps issue earlier, or post cap issue rather. Uh, so if you missed it, EVGA put out a, a statement on their um, caps on the back of the card, and they said, we covered it earlier, but they said that the production models don't have the issue and that just the reviewer ones does. This 3090 actually also does not have the issue, but our 3080 has the six pause cap issue and they want to replace it. Uh, don't have any word from other board partners yet. That was part of what I was checking email for. See if ASUS or MSI said anything, but nothing yet. We're gonna try 1150 on this. I think we might be at the limit of what this can do on air without anything more extreme. Um, so, let's see. Oh, is Linus in here or something? Someone said hi Linus, but I don't know if he jumped in or not. Well, he's not in here, is he? I don't think I... Why are you saying hi, Linus? Call Linus, they're saying, oh, okay. <laughs> I will call Jay, though. Let me call him if he, see if he answers, and I'll just ask him what he's running for, uh, for his cooling solution on that card he tested. Let's see, Jay. I'm going to call him. I'm going to mute my line for one second, tell him that he's going to be on stream if he wants, and then I'll put him on speaker. Okay, unfortunately, Jay did not answer, but maybe he'll call back. Someone said he's probably playing World of, uh, is it Warships? Is that what he plays? <laughs> All right. Uh, we'll see if he calls back. Uh, let's, people are asking me to call Linus. I'm not gonna bother Linus, he just did a stream. Let's see. Would you be interested in reviewing old cases like the uh, Phantom? The Phantom, man. I reviewed some old Phantoms, but they weren't that old, they, like the original. Uh, interested maybe as like a revisit someday. The Phantom's interesting specifically because it really put NTXT back, like on the map originally, not even back on the map, just on the map, period. Um, so that'd be kind of a fun revisit at some point. Have you, John Olson's asking, have you heard about the third part of the boards crashing? Yes. We talked about that several times already. Uh, okay. Any rumblings of AMD's cards will be good. I have not heard anything yet. <laughs> Everyone's saying he's probably playing World of Warships, and they're saying I like boats. Is that higher? 
I think that's higher, right? Was it 341? 14,362, where's that put us? 14,362. That puts us, oh man, that's right below fourth. Fourth place is 14,366. Let's see if that score, 14,362. Cool. So, I guess, well, that, what was that memory setting? I need to write that down. It's 14,362. Let's write this, these settings down. So I'll write down two fans so I know what I was running. And then 75 core, 1150 mem. And the scoring was 14,362, which is just below fourth place. So let's try 1,200. I'm thinking no at this point, but that is awfully high. Uh, I haven't worked with a lot of G6X yet, obviously. It's brand new, but I haven't seen anything go crazy high yet. Most of it's been in the 500s. Jay says, I'll call you in a few minutes. I'll say, okay, on stream and have a question for you. If Jay, I hope he's listening. If Jay doesn't call and immediately say, I like boats when I put him on speaker, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> uh, super chats. Johnny, says, Johnny One Bomb says, send Buildoid a 2080 Ti so he can mod it for you. I'd rather send him like a 30 series card if we ever end up with an extra one. Uh, B. Waskell says, oh, I'm not going to read that. <laughs> Sorry. Eric Hoffer, just got my mouse mat and mod mat today. Thanks for producing such awesome, informative content. Thank you for picking them up. I'm assuming you got the medium mod mat, uh, which sold out recently. But uh, yeah, no, thank you for, for picking those up and for the direct support. Let me see if that's, is that Jay? This is uh, Mr. Jay's two cents I'm, I'm texting with. He says, okay, give me five to 10. Jay's got a very bad perception of time. Hey, you're on speaker. Can you hear me? Uh-oh. Hey, can you hear me? Okay, let me try and put this on speaker one sec. Can you hear me or no? What? Oh, okay, gotcha. Let me try and... Okay, can you, can you hear me okay? Is my speaker not working? Check. Ah, uh, I think... Okay. All right. Well, let me let me do it this way. I will hold this mic next to my ear. I don't know if Chad's gonna be able to hear you or not, but uh, no, he says no. Well, my phone sucks. Um, so yeah. Anyway, question for you, and I'll relay it back to Chat. Is uh, is what were you running for your um, your score? What kind of cooling? Like a, yeah, for Port Royal, were you running a air conditioner? Except this time we just made a box around the whole system. Okay. And then the AC just chilled the entire system, so it was less efficient. So, do you- I can't hear you if you're talking. Oh, man. <laughs> so do you know what uh my phone sucks. Do you know what um temperature your GPU was like during the test? Okay. Wow, that's a lot of heat. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, that's pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, nice, okay. Yeah, we're just running on, um, just the card air for the stream. So I don't have anything exotic yet. 
Uh, just got a 12,000, or sorry, 14,380. Um, yeah, so you're at 14,633 now. So, CPU, I think I have at 5.3, 10 I heard KF. Oh, okay, yeah, that might help a little bit. We are, uh, so yeah, we're in fourth right now without cooling. I don't think, uh, there's like no way I'm gonna get up to your score without something other than ambient, but uh, 600, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, well, yeah, it's, I guess battle has started again. I just need to do some more interesting cooling on it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. All right, thanks for the info. All right, see, see ya. So, uh, Jay says he was using, um, he was using AC. He said he had a, a funnel hooked up to it. I did see that part of the video, uh, but I wasn't sure if his most recent score was still that one. And he said um, he would wait till it got to about 11C when he started the test. And at the end of the test, this is pretty long. It's like a, over a minute bench, two minutes maybe. So at the end of the test, he'd be at 37 degrees Celsius. So definitely, I mean, that's uh, um, I ran Alan 2 already to answer that question. We already did that on the other card. Uh, so yeah, definitely the, the amount of heat, the temperature change, started the test to the end of the test with AC on it is pretty crazy. So you can see where it'd be beneficial to run extra cooling like Jay was doing. So we're pretty damn close to his score for just ambient. Like I said, I'm happy with that. And then we got to do like water or something a little bit more interesting later. Uh, but um, yeah, so that puts us, we're currently in fourth place. So the, the rankings are Kingpin in first, uh, v Manuel GM in second with 14,674. Jay is super close to that. He's at 14,633. He's really close to second. And then uh, World Eater is in now. Oh, we just bumped World Eater down. Uh, so World Eater's in fifth, and we're in fourth. So right now it's it's KP, uh, Manuel, and then Jay, and then us. And I think it, once we get some more cooling on it, that's technically an even higher score. 14,381. Can't be mad at that. So, I'm just trying to think if there's like a way I can technically let this breathe LN2 without using, like pouring it on it. It wouldn't cool as efficiently as the AC would, uh, but it might be amusing. But we're not gonna get up to Jay's score anyway, so. Um, let's just see where it crashes, where it stops taking clocks. And I'm gonna write down where we are right now for settings. I need to do a bunch of super chats at the end after that. How is Kingpin's score so much higher? Uh, liquid nitrogen directly to the card. So that's what we were using earlier, where you put a liquid nitrogen pot on it. Um, he's probably using a KP, a Kingpin card, which has a bunch of things like Volt mods on it. We don't have any mods. We don't have any extra power target. So once we can get more power on that, which I could do with shunt mods, uh, other hard mods, or VBIOS, we can go further. But KP is running a liquid nitrogen pot like this and pouring liquid nitrogen, I think. That's almost certainly what he's doing. He doesn't really like overclocking any other way. So uh, so we were at 80 offset core, 1200 mem. That offset's gonna change as we um, decrease temperature later, but that'll get us started. That was 14381, pretty cool. If you put sunglasses on the card, will it be instantly cooler? Yes. Uh, let's do 85 core. These are like such little points. Actually, you know what? Let's do 80 and let's just try a higher mem. I don't think we're gonna get more out of mem. This is so high. So 1250, 80 core, run. See how that goes. Uh, okay. Lichtenberg says, have you considered tests of RGB versus normal fans? In my opinion, the industry deserves a proper beating. 
people should know what they sacrifice and demand better. Uh, considered, yes. Gotten to, no. We're, we're, we, there's so much stuff to test always, and it's hard to start new tests. So we've got some fan stuff we've done on and off. Eventually we'll get there, but haven't done RGB versus non-RGB yet. I do know that the LL fans are not, not that um, great. No, someone says hot air from the power supply is blind to the GPU. No, it's not. This is intake. This is exhaust. This is not that hot anyway. It's like probably plus one C from ambient. So that power supply is still not doing a ton of work. So we're good. Digital Alchemist. Uh, hi, I love your content. Wanted to give back. Thank you. Says, I'm considering, question, I'm considering a 3080 for 1440p gaming, but I'm worried about bottlenecks at my resolution with current gen CPU. What is the CPU? I don't see it listed. I want to maintain 120 plus FPS. Do you think there will be issues? Uh, I don't know what your CPU is. Um, if you're on like 9000 series Intel or sooner, probably not really issues, but I don't know what the CPU is though. I didn't miss it, did I? No. Uh, Gulag Kane says, make sure to put LN2 on the capacitors. Joker Productions, Joker, Joker's in the chat, said, I heard the RTX 3090 can deliver actual 8K gaming performance under a, a shunt mod. A, he calls it a Cleveland Steamer shunt mod. Can you confirm? Uh, if you shunt mod the card, you might get enough power to do a little bit more, but I don't know about that. Um... <laughs> Aldranis says, nice shirt. Been following you for a while now. Enjoy the content. Thank you. What are your thoughts on some board partners using cheap power delivery components? Definitely going to wait for more FEs to come back into stock. So uh, we covered this a few times at this point. For time's sake, I'm going to skip this one. Sorry, I think I've answered it by now. If this person kept watching the stream, they've definitely seen me answer that a few times. Uh, there is that EVGA statement out too. What do I think about it? I need to look into it more to see what, what, why. Like, why did they do that? What happened? What did they think they were... Were they trying to save on something? Were they misinformed by NVIDIA or what? It can be higher. Wow, dang, that's crazy. Crazy scoring, 14.394. I wasn't expecting to get anywhere near this good of a score <laughs> out of this. So, where is that? That is... Still going to be fourth, but it's a good distance. Now we're 30 points ahead of fifth. We are still over 200 points behind Jay. Just over, t yeah. So, I don't know, that's, that's pretty damn close. <laughs> if we could get to where Jay is without anything exotic, then I, I think that'd be a pretty good start, but I'm not definitely not expecting that. Let's see. So that was 1250. Let me write this score down too. So 14394, so I remember these settings. 14394 and then 80 and 1250. Okay. There's no way this mem does 1300, right? That would be stupid. 1250 is already stupid. So I kind of doubt this is going to happen, but I doubted the last one would happen too. We're going to crash at some point. Yeah, I was considering Alan two vapors in, in front of the card. Um, gold chip, yeah, it might be gold memory chips. Okay. AFX Winter says, Steve, what PC would you build if you were going to get obsessed with Cyberpunk like the rest of us? Uh, I don't know. I, I think I always like trying to make the older hardware work. So I still like the idea of 1080 Ti's, uh, but I don't know. I'd have to look at the Cyberpunk requirements again. Um, I would try to, to keep an older system running because I like 1080 Ti's. I like messing around with like the, I don't know, 4,000, 7,000 era Intel CPUs. So I'd probably try that first just because it'd be fun and we're using old hardware is cool. But uh, I don't know, otherwise I'd probably be in the wait and see camp like most of you for the GPUs. Let's just try that one more time. Let's just see if, it's, if there's any luck on the second one. There should be no way this runs. Let's see. Rob in chat says, got to 13,005 in Port Royal with my 10700K and EVJ3090 FTW3 Ultra. So you must have one also then. Uh, stock, haven't done OC yet. That's, that's pretty good for stock. That's about what I'd expect. 
if you go up to like five point something on um, the CPU, like five point two or three, then that'll help a little more. Okay. Pre-recorded. No. That, that that wouldn't make any sense for this. It's so. Why would we make like a five-hour pre-recorded video? Uh, Light Peach says, can't wait for the Galahad AIO review. Ordered some nice mats last live stream. Thank you. Super excited for that as well. Yes, Galahad data's done. It's been done for a little while. I need to verify it. Um, I have some additional tests I want to run on it. And then it's a matter of getting away from the GPU content for a little bit. Uh, Kyle Devine says, Drinking game for 30 series capacitor references when? Yes, that is, uh, that, that probably would have killed a few people earlier. <laughs> Tony Schloop says, keep it up. Thank you. Laser Bam. Uh, Luke is here. Great to see how far your channel has come. Love keeping up with your work. Uh, thank you for helping me build my first PC. Keep up the amazing work. Cheers. Absolutely. No problem. Glad to have helped with the PC build. Uh... Wow, it hasn't died yet, huh? Oh, here's hoping the uh, the second run without any changes makes it. Uh, school's out. What genres of music are you into? I'll let you take a guess. Uh, but uh, Trivium's good. I like Trivium a lot. Parkway Drive's good. Uh, of Mice and Men is good. Yeah, that was really close to making it through. I think it's it's getting a little too hot, and it's losing stability. Very close, though. Rise Against is good. Okay. So 1300, I'm thinking, is no good. Let's try 1320. And then I'm going to stop there for mem. And that'll probably be it. And we'll go maybe do some, a couple megahertz on core and walk away from it. Uh, let's see. Someone's asking what it is. Is Port Royal is the benchmark to answer that? Uh, let's see. People liking the Trivium reference. Nice. Have you heard of Dance Gavin Dance? Yes, I've listened to them. I, I've got at least one of the albums. Uh, okay. Pause cap, MLCC, will you make a video on what's going on? Once I read a little bit more, I, I've read it through a lot of it. Someone says, Steve is a hip hop head. I, I also like hip hop, yes. Hilltop Hoods is good. Uh, Bad Cujo says, you don't think you'll, you don't think you'll expand soon, question mark. I'm not sure what I said earlier. Uh, best to plan for it at least. The algorithms like you, and I think the growth is going to accelerate. Cheers. I was talking to Linus earlier, I would like the sub growth to maybe slow down a little bit because uh, we've got a lot of people who haven't seen our stuff before and it takes a little while for people to get used to it. So sometimes it can help to slow that down a little bit. But uh, yeah, we obviously are planning. The Martin C123 says, will there be a Rip J on Port Royal? Also, what CPU is this? Yes, 10 k uh, We are approaching a Rip J revival for this. So we're very close right now. Uh, currently we are in fourth place right behind J and uh, we need some better cooling to get up there. So it looks like this MEM is gonna be unstable at 1300 plus. That's still insane though. What was the highest score I did on? That was on 1250. So let's go back to 1250 and let's just run like 85 core and I'm gonna read through a bunch of super chats and start trying to wind it down with see what our final scores are. It might be, might be already past us. Okay. Is that the liquid nitrogen tank? Yes. Okay. Uh, let's see. So, where was I? Charles Ruling. How can I put, how far can I push 7700K on dryness? I'm not sure. I never did exotic overclocking on it, but, uh, five-ish was for sure doable on air. So I don't know, you might be able to approach five, five, six, something like that. Giovanni Z, bought a 3090 yesterday due to lack of 3080 stock couch. That's a, that's, that's a big jump. I'm sure Nvidia is appreciative of that. Uh, but because, oh, okay. Sort of the rest of it. 
But because of your Spitfire review, I canceled my order. <laughs> uh, thanks for saving me the trouble. Yeah, I mean, I definitely, I wouldn't buy a 3090 just because you couldn't get a 3080. Um, definitely try and try and wait around for the others. <sighs> Route the AC vent from the ceiling into the card. I, I actually thought about that earlier. I was looking up there. I was like, there's one right there. Uh, there's one there too. I was thinking about that. It'd be so unwieldy though. I don't know how we deal with the camera work. We'd have to do an upload instead of a stream, I think. Just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, Spin Cycle says, pause caps versus MLCC group. It's getting real. Conflicted says, the Department of Health and Safety requests that the ethernet cable gets taped down. Love your streams, by the way. Well, uh, technically, it is a temporary fixture, and so that's fine. Uh, Sir Hatches says, but can it run crisis? Yes. Sayo says, please make videos on the Strix 3080, as that's the card I'm aiming for, when you get one anyway. Uh, Gulag Kane, uh, yeah, we are going to work on a Strix, hopefully, by the way. Gulag Kane says, put on two on the caps. I got that one earlier. Nero Augustus, appreciate your work. Uh, are you keeping the industry honest? Well, I don't know that anyone can do that, but hope you can get some sleep after all this. Thank you. Yes, I, I do too. Hopefully the 30 series slows down. So that is actually, I think, lower than last time. So we're having some score regression now. Is that lower? Yes. 14,394 is our peak still, but it kind of ran uh, at 85. So I'm wondering if maybe I can do some tuning later and get that up a little more. But I need to go through more Super Chats anyway, so we, we might as well do another 5 megahertz on there if we can. King Gidra ETA on Buildroid PCB videos. Yes, we have one done for the FE card, 3080. Uh, I'm thinking the next few days, maybe over the weekend. Let's do the next one. Joshua Snyder sent a sticker. Thank you. TW624. Do virtual reality HMDs like the Index benefit from more VRAM? Well, if you're running a higher resolution, then it will potentially benefit from more VRAM. But I don't think it's going to benefit from 3090 levels in a significant way over 3080, but I haven't tested it yet. So keep that in mind. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as will it benefit, like just in, a, in the strictest sense of uh, resolution and impact on memory, yes, it, it would, but to an extent, to a limit. Gulag Kane. Hey, Linus, you're my favorite YouTuber. I think, um, unfortunately, I think you might have the wrong person. Uh, is hypnophobic. Says, is my 8700K at 5 gigahertz an okay pairing with a 3090? I play on 1440 ultra wide 144 hertz, and I want to stay above 120 FPS, max out if possible. We have 8700K and 8086K benchmarks in our recent CPU reviews. I don't know if we have overclocks on them, but... That would, uh, sometimes it just needs some help. That, the valve gets frozen open. Uh, I would check there and see how it compared in our benchmarks versus the 2080 Ti. If that's limited, then you'll be limited on the other stuff. Uh, let's see. Does Nvidia send you a custom driver before testing? Not really. We get the ones that are pretty close to release. Normally there's one final update where they fix stuff that the press has found. So like some games weren't launching with the original press driver and those were fixed for release. But uh, it is otherwise very close to or often a release driver. So that didn't work. I'm going to go ahead and say our score is probably the 14394 we had. But I'd like to run Time Spy Extreme. For, well, we're going to be so far behind from CPU though. But... Uh, let's do it anyway, just see what happens. Oh, actually, this clock isn't really stable. Uh, Edwards Gaming says, would still be able to edit the .ini file in full. Yeah, that would have worked too. Good point on the earlier um, uh, Quake 2 stuff. 3D mark, yes. Uh, Zebra Dell, in your opinion, would it be worth upgrading from a 2070 Super to a 3080 
with a 3900X and 1440p monitor. Hmm. Worth it? Mm, I'm leaning no on that. I feel like that's still, you're generationally still really close. So personally, I would say no. But it, I guess it depends on if you're happy with your frame rate. But that feels like a really close, you might want to skip a generation unless you're really missing RTX. AC Fraser said, uh, sent $50, thank you very much. Said, uh, this is referring to my earlier statement where I told someone who sent a lot of money, it was um, Stovenism. I, I told them that I always think of Paul when someone sends a lot of money because I, I, all I can think is like, I hope you're independently wealthy. Because that's what Paul always says on his streams. Uh, I think Paul's got a pretty good attitude towards it. So this uh, AC Fraser said, I'm not independently wealthy, but this is the least I could do after all the info I received from your channel. Bought merch too, and probably will continue to do so. Rocking the mouse mat and a couple shirts. Thanks for all you do. Well, thanks so much. Um, yeah, I, that's definitely very helpful, the, the product pickups. I, I like doing those because then you get something for it. So that always uh, feels good to do, to get supported that way because you get to pick something up in, in exchange. So thank you for that. We're just running Time Spy Extreme for old time's sake. This is the one that Jay and I battled on last time. You really need like a 3175X, 3970X to get good scores out of this particular benchmark. So we will be CPU limited at some level. Um, Jay and I decided to use Port Royal this time because we want something different. We really like that benchmark and it's GPU targeted. So in a sense, it reduces some of the work on the CPU side. So that's a little unfortunate because I'd like to do all that still, but it really focuses you on the GPU side so we can do something new. So yeah, it's just for old time sake, see where it lands. Uh, let's see. Ryan Peterson, I'm gonna try and read a bunch of these super chats and get down towards our marker where we cut them off earlier. So if, you, if you're still sending super chats, like I've got it on the screen, please don't send any more because um, we're not gonna answer them. Uh, and I always hate not answering them, but we, we do have to put a limit somewhere. So that didn't like it. It failed in GT1, which might be a memory stability, I'm thinking. Ryan Peterson said, I love that you can see the Walmart PC sub boost on the graph, oh yeah, sub boost, on the graph of the t-shirt. Yes, that is funny that you pointed that out. That is in fact, uh, one of the large spikes in the shirt graph. So on the back of my shirt, there's a graph for subscriber base over time. And uh, I don't know, I, haven't, I think it's visible, I'm not really sure. Uh, is that, are you able to see that? There is a Walmart PC boost. Yeah, there it is. Uh, there, that's the Walmart PC, I think. Yeah, that's right, that spike right there. That's what that person's referring to. <laughs> yeah, this CPU is gonna get killed in this benchmark. Uh, let's see. <laughs> All right, so. This is from when I was asking Patrick for assistant earlier getting stuff. VC Jester said, is Patrick doing sick ninja rolls while he sneaks around to get the ethernet cable? You know, there's, there's certain tactics we train here that we can't reveal. And unfortunately I'm not at liberty to disclose the degree of our ninja rolls. Uh, Zelzko Mihajlovic says, buy a 3900X an hour, wait for 4000 series, workstation 3D graphics needs. I mean, if you like need a system now and you're, you feel like it's holding you back, especially if you're doing 3D graphics for money, then buy now might be worth it depending on, on how much it will free up your workflow in order to uh, get more projects done. So maybe worth it. 3900X if you get it like 400 bucks is pretty good. It's been hard to find them lately at that, like in stock. Uh, so I wouldn't feel bad about that. That said, I, I, at this point, I'd probably say wait. I don't actually know anything more than anyone else, but I'd say wait like you know, two weeks or whatever it is. Is it two weeks? I think it's the eighth. I'd wait like the two weeks to hear AMD's announcement because they'll probably put a date on the launch of the next Ryzen series CPUs. So you can at least figure out if you want to wait or not. Um, downside with that, if there is inventory now, it might run out by then, but 
I think they're still making stuff, so. Let's see. Uh, Martin Sclaney says, would a stream at 4K be possible? Uh, we probably have the bandwidth for it, but I'm a little worried about maintaining that. Oh, anyway, we got a, a score for one. 73.5 is pretty high for that benchmark. All right, so our score for Port Royal then is going to be uh, the final score, 14,394 is what we got live on stream today. That's higher than all my pre-testing, which stopped in the, I think, low threes. So that's really good. Was not expecting a score that high today. That's fourth place, I think, unless it's been updated since I checked. And uh, we'll upload that after this, but um, why run X1 as admin, good question. Uh, in the past, that's funny that people notice that stuff. That's a good eye. In the past, um, NVIDIA had broken drivers where overclocking tools, if not run as admin, would show that they affected it but the clocks wouldn't actually be affected. So I do it now out of, out of havoc because I wasted a lot of time trying to figure that out. Okay, let me, let me get through these super chats. We're gonna read through the cutoff time that I put on the screen earlier, which, let's move that down so it's more visible, uh, which was 9.39 local time. We're at 8.39 now, so let me read through a bunch of these. Um, uh, but quick recap for the stream, what happened. 14394, really happy with that. We'll need to do some more exotic stuff later. Catch J. Frequency testing with liquid nitrogen earlier. We saw about 100 megahertz range from subambient to 70C. Uh, more reasonably, you'd be at like 40, 50 megahertz for like uh, water or something. We played Quake 2 for a bit. Uh, and then we did this at 1250 megahertz memory offset and um, 80 core. Okay. So, um, where is the last one? Ryan Phillips sent a message said, after all the 30 series coverage you guys have done, are you and the others considering a holiday? Awesome work uh, and staff. We're gonna slow down a little bit next week. I think we have a lot of videos in backlog right now, which is very uncommon for us. So we'll probably slow down a little bit, but the uploads should remain mostly consistent. Might, might skip a day or something. Uh, Thomas Arson says, thank you for the knowledge and, uh, let's see, you try to spread that message to people with your channel and hopefully it's opening minds. Oh, and for being, and for the work ethic, uh, hopefully it's opening minds. Well, thank you for, uh, for the support, obviously. And yeah, I mean, we're, we're trying to, because it's more difficult as the audience size grows because message gets diluted, but, um, trying to really focus on like explaining stuff to the best of our abilities in the reviews and the process and not only going through numbers, sometimes it just depends on how dense the review is, but we're trying to help people uh, understand, uh, you know, why more than just what the numbers are. Cause then you can extrapolate it to other cards in the future. So like, if you know kind of how to read a review, that's a skill a lot of people don't even have. Like if you want a good example, if you want to know how does a 1060 compare to a 1080, we didn't run a 1060 or a 1060 to a 3080. We didn't run a 1060, but we ran a 3080 and a 1080. So you could look at 1080 versus 1080, take a percent scale, go to an old review, look at 1080 versus 1060, and it's kind of additive at that point. You can figure it out. So even just reading reviews, a lot of people um, uh, don't quite have the experience to put that aspect of it together, where you can compare some old numbers to new numbers and, and get a percent scale. Okay. Um, Novaland, what would you expect an SLI setup to do? Oh, what would you expect an SLI setup would do for 8K gaming, I guess? Well, best case you can hope for is maybe double in the games that really support it. Uh, so you kind of playable territory at that point for some of them, for the few that support it. Uh, Rick Budzak says, 4K, 8K, 16K. When I was a kid, we did everything with 640K. Talking about, uh, I think, memory size or cash or something. Oh, no, not even that. Uh, Wooder Jonker said, how about 320 by 240, like the old days before our first GPU? Yeah, that, it would probably complete in like half a second. Uh, Adam, he might be CPU bound. Adam Lynn, bought a mouse pad last stream, uh, but YouTube dumped the super chat. Just want to say, oh yeah, that happened at the beginning. Just want to say the best, most unbiased tech channel on YouTube. I, thanks, sorry for missing the super chat. Yeah, so last stream with Joe, uh, YouTube purged like the first 10 minutes of Super Chats, 20 minutes of Super Chats, right when I was reading through them. 
it's happened to Lewis Rossman recently too, and I, I don't know, I don't know if it's actually like combing through it as I'm reading right now, or if it was just because I updated the um, what was that thing called slow mode last time. But uh, as yeah, thanks, and sorry about that. Uh, Bean Fiend said, "Can we see 13 FPS?" We did. We did get 13 FPS briefly in that benchmark in Quake early. Uh, Na, here's 70 percent of five dollars to go. Oh yeah, because the split to go towards a high-speed lens. This one works okay for the FPS, though. Yes, that is a, a lens that can zoom well and is compatible with high-speed cameras would be good for the Schlieren photography, is what that's in reference to. Precious Live says, hey, Steve, love the content. Quick question. What are the good fans for the Fantex P500A and 140 size? Uh, I mean, like, Nocto 140s are good, but some of them are ugly. There's... Um, the Arctic ones are actually pretty good. I don't know if they're 140s out yet, the one that's on that cooler. Uh, who else do we like right now? Like Gentle Typhoon for 120s, but they're kind of old. Nidec fan. And Octua and um, Arctic and EK have some good solutions out there. Genius10391, have you heard about the leak from Igor's lab? Certain lower end. Yes, we answered that earlier. Uh, Dr. Respectful, the cousin of Dr. Disrespect. Says, hey Steve, your phone rang during the true 8K 12 FPS. It was Jensen. He wanted to say he still sold cards. Yeah, yeah. all of them, apparently. Uh, I punch demons with the Doom avatar. Says, imagine not being able to run Quake 2 in 2020. <laughs> but the real question is, can it run Crisis? I think Quake 2 is harder to run at this point. Uh, we don't have too many more before I catch up to all the super chats. But, uh,. Let me grab water so my voice doesn't die, and I'll read one while I go get that. Russell says, do you think a 3080 FE in a Node 202 case oh, thanks, could work without thermal issues? Let me look up a Node 202 and uh, see. Let's see. Oh, that's interesting. I saw a Discord message from our mod that is an interesting trick for benchmarks. Um, Node 202. I need to look that up. It's been a while. I know it's small. I don't remember how small. Very small. Uh, is there access to air for the GPU? Ooh, I don't know about that. So the question was, do you think the 3080 FE could work without thermal issues? Without thermal issues is kind of a, a big stretch. I don't know. You might be running warm on it, for sure. Uh, but I would have to test it. I haven't really seen the Node 202 in a really long time. I'm going to go with yes, but it might be manageable. A Balanced Diet says, hey, Steve, just wanted to let you know I ordered an item to your P.O. box. Should be there Monday or Tuesday. I hope it reaches you well. Thank you for the heads up. We'll check that. Uh, J.W. Dickinson, GN Beanie. Not yet. Uh, I can't. Your memory speed may cause you to lose FPS due to ECC trying to correct it. Yes. Uh, and yes, it does not show memory artifacts anymore. This person is correct. So we actually did end up seeing improvements, but you saw some score regression at some of those 50 megahertz intervals, and that's what that was. Let's see. Um, Isogen. For airflow and thermal analysis, have you checked out CATS candlestick sensors? Could be useful. I am going to check that out right now. Let's see. There's a video that popped up with from 2016 with a side a profile shot of a person who looks an awful lot like Linus from 2016. And I was like, ah, oh, that seems nope, not the same guy, but there might be a career for him if if he starts up a knockoff channel. Uh Linus Tech Tips, L-I-E-N-U-S, Tech Tips. Candlestick sensor. Okay, I have this open for later. Thank you for the information. Really appreciate that. Spets, no message. CC, no message. A4, Jade Storm. Can you try it at 4K before you change cards? Thanks. Sorry, we didn't do that earlier. Uh, Nick Roden. Steve, thank you for the content. While I'm watching the stream, I'm messing around with the EVGA FTW3 3090. I feel like if you, you say you have a 3090 right now, everyone's like, where does this guy live and how do I get the card from him? 
It's so rare. If you saw Kyle's video, I thought Kyle's video, by the way, Bitwit, was very creative. He went to um, a micro center at a launch day of the 3090 and lined up and um, interviewed people. I thought that was pretty cool. But uh, they say, Nick says, has EVJ released a custom BIOS to unlock a greater power target? Not yet, but it's possible. There's a BIOS switch too, which is useful for that. Uh, so you always have backup. Which means it's useful if you want to like try and hack one or try one from the internet because you've got a backup if it's bad. Renee Sorensen, you just need to write demo demo one. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Noted for next time. Lego Freak, with all the knowledge uh, accumulated with hardware, could you develop a 120 mil PC case fan that can undervolt, overvolt? No, I, I, no, I have no ability to do any of that. <laughs> Andy Clark. Uh, Hi, Steve. Congrats to Snowflake and the team on recent successes. Any plans to do more work with Cat Angels? Great charity choice. Thank you. Uh, we just did an eBay auction for them a little while ago, and eBay runs on a delay to, to deduct the money. So that got sent over to them recently. They were really happy about that. Um, they got the stuff from Linus for that uh, PC troubleshooting challenge. So we'll definitely do more with them. I don't have a plan on the roadmap right now today, but for sure we're doing more with them uh, probably before end of year or towards end of year. So, I mean, plus we've got an extra one of those cat cases, so I don't know, I might maybe build an update their PC in one of those. That'd be fitting. Trev Edge says, let me know if you need anything bike related. Uh, I appreciate it. I don't need anything there right now. I'm, I tend to ride stuff until it breaks. So, uh, nothing's broken recently, thankfully. Uh, we're at 8.54 on the super chat time, and I'm trying to read down to 9.39 local time. Uh, it looks like it's not too many more. They slowed down when I um, put that message up. Bike related. Gemini, would you recommend getting a 3090 or 10900K for more frames in 1080p gaming coming from a 2080Ti and 8700K? Uh, I think the, let's see, 3090 I wouldn't recommend for just more frames. That's a whole lot of spend. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I would recommend the 3090 for that. Uh, did you over, already overclock? Yes, we already did. We are done overclocking. I'm going through the Super Chats now. Uh, so, no, I wouldn't do a 3090 for that. You'll get more from the 10900K upgrade than from the 20 Ti. Well, you get more from the 3090 upgrade, but it's not, that's not worth it still. Chats in bonk. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I, I wouldn't do the 3090. Uh, it just costs too much. Maybe 3080. That might be worth considering. But even still, you're like, performance increase from the 2080 Ti is not that crazy. Overclock 2080 Ti. And then maybe a 10900K with that. Uh, CC sent a uh, sticker chat. Thank you. Said VC Jester said, used for. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, we got that one earlier. Patrick G. Yes, it was because of Age of Empires 2. Yes, the. the uh, References we're making earlier. Unknown stuntman. Finally snagged a mouse mat. Any more waifu component reviews coming soon? We don't have any on the map right now, but that's that's surely not for lack of the industry trying. Uh, Ursus says, I'm cleaning the apartment, vacuuming and all the rest. You know you want to trade me the overclocked 3090. I'm not sure why you cleaning your apartment would make me want to give you my 3090. <laughs> uh, isn't this all no? I'm thinking of building up my own PC, but now seeing all the GPU crashes, I don't know what GPU or uh, should I get or should I wait. Uh, so I wouldn't let that stop you from building your own PC. There were issues with the 20 series at launch too, similar to this. And probably the, the, the most like responsible thing to do is wait a little bit and let the issues be ironed out by early adopters and um, then come in a bit later. Because it's not like they're, these cards are sitting on shelves, so you don't have to worry about getting old stock if you wait a few months. So if you can do it, I'd wait a couple months maybe and pick up if you want to really avoid those. Otherwise, there is some info out there. Like, EBJ has just updated their cards. It should be fixed. I'm assuming the other vendors will follow suit, so there should be some info on what's okay. They said XC3 is okay. Don't know about other vendors yet. Definitely don't let that stop you building a PC, though. You can always use a different card. Catawax, do you have a P.O. box still open? I have older stuff to send. Uh, how are the out-of-the-box thermals on the foil shirt? They're good, of course. This foil. Um, the P.O. box is still open if you have that, yes. 
JJ Cup J sent a good job message in response to our score, which was fourth place, at least at the time I placed it. Connor Johnson, GN Branded Thermos, question mark. We've thought about it. Uh, Chef says, thank you for the education. Learning a lot from the videos and helpful folks on your Discord. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, yeah, the community is pretty good on there. So, I mean, I guess it's interesting. That's kind of where things are now. It used to be all, only forums like overclock.net. Those are still really active for overclocking, but uh, yeah, community is good there. So glad to hear that. Shraken DT says to all the gamers Nexus, I want to thank you guys for uh, cutting through all the bull crap. I purchased two of the autograph mouse pads and one of the one mil sub T-shirt. Uh, thanks a lot. I mean, yeah, that's that's extremely helpful, obviously. And uh, you should be getting the mouse pad soon. The one mil sub shirt will be entering production shortly. We're collecting the last few um, orders for size distribution. And uh, yeah, thanks again for watching everything. Uh, let's see, we are a couple pages left of these. Fried GPU, 6,000. I was telling Patrick to put his hair down earlier, I guess, so that it would be, so that we would match or something. Hey Dan, 1983 said, what do you think about Linus promoting this 8K gaming experience? So, Linus was actually, he was really upfront with it, which is good. Everything's marked as like sponsor and their stuff when it is sponsored, so that's good. It's, it's not super common to be as forthcoming as they are. Uh, he slipped a few things in there where you could see the settings were controlled. You could see that he was more talking about the TV sometimes than the card itself, so that's good. Uh, I personally would not have done that, that deal, but it is not off-brand for LMG. And they disclosed it all at least. So I mean, like you know, it's not off brand. Is probably probably the way I would phrase it. Edwards Gaming and Hardware uh, also is 3090 review is pretty critical. So that's good. Uh, is that FTW3 Ultra or normal? Good question. I'm assuming an Ultra, but I can't read it from here. Yeah, I can't read it from over here. Uh, I'm assuming Ultra, but I'm actually not sure. Pull this fan. Are you going to show Waterblocks 30 series yet? Yeah, I will eventually. Um, Hans Magnus Brandvold says, when can we see the Buildzoid PCB breakdown? That's coming in the next few days. Brad Williams, uh, love you all. Keep it up. ENC, thank you for the support. Uh, Blake Albertson sent a message that said, bravo. Head Admiral says, have any of the 3000 series cards? Oh, had external fan headers. Good question. I'd like to hook up Noctis to it. This one does. I don't know what other ones do. I haven't looked at them all yet, but this one does. The Eagle doesn't, I don't think. The Tough might. The Strix probably does, but uh, this is the only one I'm looking at right now, at least that has it. Um, Simon Deeper says, is PCIe 4 going to make a difference in gaming, or do I not have to wait for Intel 11th? Not a big difference right now, at least on 3080s. We saw almost no difference. Uh, that video's up. Dylan VD. RTX 3080 or wait for AMD to render an Unreal Engine. <sighs> That's pretty good. I'll, I'll give you that one. <laughs> Chad Eine, how much money did you get for the review of the 3090? Uh, if you're asking about the review or I titled it How to Nuke Your, Your Launch, there's an XD at the end of this. They're joking, obviously. But I, I don't think NVIDIA wanted that style of review. <laughs> Adam Alchemist. Did Igor's lab post the power MLCC spec for 3090s? Is it one MLCC, five of the cheaper things? Or is it spec two? Is the 3090 FTW built under spec, two spec or over spec? So according to the statement we got earlier from EBGA on the phone and on their website, uh, I'll, pay, I'll paste that in chat if you missed it. This is EBGA's official statement on the cap thing. I don't have one from anyone else yet, but I haven't talked to anyone else. Uh, that was in the middle of the stream that came out. So they were saying that their production cards are built to the correct spec, allegedly, and that the um, press samples were, this, like this one, not built to spec, and they want to replace the board. I, we ran this on LN2, and it was okay, but that doesn't mean anything. I ran it through all the review benchmarks, too. But again, it's not like it's gaming hours at a time. So I don't really have full insight to it. But apparently this six cap thin uh, solution is is not good, so they're replacing that. That was the statement we got earlier. Hopefully that helps answer that question. Um, I pasted the link to their forum if you want to get more info on it. For EVG anyway, we don't have anyone else's yet. 
Uh, Eric Lacasse says, got my toolkit recently. Nice, thank you uh, for picking that up. Says, it's awesome. Any plans on selling the schematics cards separately or selling the cards for new GPUs? So yeah, we have like these uh, how-to cards that are just in there as extras for disassembling common GPUs. Um, no plans on selling them separately. I mean, I could probably just put them up on the site or something. It's just how-to guides on GPUs. But I did, was thinking about adding some new ones uh, for the next run, that is. Mike Sherry says, why does NVIDIA want us to game at the resolution of 70 millimeter film? Uh, there comes a point where high-grade film stock is overdoing it. Uh, I think they're running into an issue where they were trying to find a reason for people to buy the 3090. And I think NVIDIA clearly knew their performance. They knew it was going to be 10 to 20, 10 to 15 percent, 15 kind of at the high end, between the two cards. And they're like, how do we sell this thing to more people than just artists? Uh, because I think they're probably thinking, artists already know they want it. We don't really have to market to them because they're looking for VRAM and we have it. Uh, how do we sell this to a bunch of gamers <laughs> who don't know any better? And the answer was, can it do 8K technically? And I think someone in there said it can technically do 8K on these games with these settings. Uh, so let's market it that way. I think that's where that came from. So why, why do they want you to game at the resolution? Uh, they're trying to sell cards, obviously. And they're trying to find some kind of gimmick to push a 3090 where otherwise it doesn't make a lot of sense to buy it. So I think that's the reasoning behind it. Uh, I think they're probably regretting that decision, though. Roy R., any inside word on when more 3090 founders are coming from NVIDIA? Uh, is any partner working on a purely blower fan model? I actually don't know. I haven't seen any. Normally we see a lot of them by now, so that's a good point. Um, no inside word on the 3090s. Uh, founders editions, that is. I, I don't know when they're going to arrive. I know that the partners have them arriving pretty much every day or every couple days and that in um, October, mid-October, to end especially, there should be a lot more supply of 30 series. But it sounds like they don't expect it will meet demand still, but there's supposed to be a lot more in October. Hopefully that helps. Uh, otherwise, NVIDIA, FE, no idea. Let's see, we've got a couple more pages of these. BMCP6, what CPU is that? 790XE? No, not anymore. Cube, please. Uh, also, oh, Ice Cube. Yeah, that was another meme. Also, please ask NZXT if I can has Puck. I think BMCP6 got just about every meme that's ever been in our live streams in that one go. That is impressive. You missed Tater Tots. That's the one you missed. Bjorn Owen. I'm having some trouble looking at the Asus TOF 3080OC and comparing between reviewed samples and store pictures. Oh, for um, the question, for the caps. Let me get Polar's off the shelf. I'll be right back. <clears throat> So, it's grabbing a 3080 right now. So I don't know if this helps you. I, I don't have like any updates. I don't know if there are updates, but if you're looking at uh, store pictures in the least, I'll just set this up so you can see what the back of a review sample looks like. I don't know if this is all of them, but um, I'm not looking at the store page right now. Hopefully that helps you at least compare what's out there in reviewer land. To, to what they have in their store. Marcella, oh, I got yours. Uh, Shark Hudson, <laughs> when Patrick was on stream, said, do you guys go to the same barber? Love your streams, keep it up. No, no, we did not. Bjorn Owen said, reviewed samples have better caps, but the store ones have the lower capacity capacitors, they say. Are there two different versions of the PCBs? I am not sure if there are two different versions of the PCBs. Uh, like I said earlier, I haven't looked too much into the capacitor thing yet. We just got word from EVGA what was going on on their end in this stream live. So I haven't looked into it too much yet. Uh, let's see. CC sent... Yeah, it's gone. CC sent a message that said, Heart Patrick, when he came out to read the Super Chats. Ensign Ricky, what are your predictions on 8K 3090 SLIUs? I mean, in games that support it, we're like kind of close to making it work, so... That might be all you need for some of those games. Problem is, again, support for it. Uh, we were not able to get SLI working earlier, but it could be a driver toggle, it could be games, I don't know. We had trouble with it earlier. Nori SS says, thoughts on Derbauer's video where his 3090 OC over 1920 megahertz on H2O. Uh, 
GNFE review card boosted higher stock. Yeah, I was going to say 1920 on water sounds bad. I don't know what. Maybe that's a power limit on this card he's using. Um, it says, is Andrew getting a 3090 now or will he remain a peasant? <laughs> and she laughed. <laughs> So, uh, and then they say with a Titan RTX. You don't have a Titan RTX, though. And Andrew has a 2080 Super now. Uh, are you going to get a 3090? Uh, I don't know. I he says, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, yeah, the uh, 3090 probably makes, use, makes sense for use in that scenario just because of the memory capacity. So, um, I, yeah, I guess. I guess you would first have to be able to find one in stock to get it anyway, so. Uh, let's see. Andrew said, not that one, says, found this channel while seeking out educated reviews of Ryzen products. Went ahead and jumped from a 2600 to 3700X. Gave the 2600 to a friend to get him started on his own build. That's awesome. And then says, woohoo, less e-waste. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, 2600 is not what it used to be, but it's still pretty good. It's still better than a lot of consumer computers out there. So... Yeah, it's a bit limited these days. Uh, I wouldn't put a brand new GPU with it because of PCIe limitations as well, or just the CPU being limited. But um, definitely still 100% good CPU, especially if you overclock it. You get a lot out of the Sandy Bridge and, and stretch it out further. Okay, we're about, we're most of the way through. There's about uh, a couple dozen more entries, I think. Sir Hatches says, yeah, since when does TJ Lavin do GPU overclock? I, I don't understand the reference. I'm sorry. Uh, Chan Grzybowski, is there a logical, uh, non-aesthetic reason to go with hard tube liquid cooling? I was planning on doing it, but the real talk, but the talk about 3080 not being food, etc., gave me second thoughts. Uh, thanks, and get some food after the stream. Yes, yes, the 3080 is unfortunately not food, because I would eat it right now if it were. But the um, so is there a non-aesthetic reason to go hard tube? Let me first preface this by saying I only really mostly do water cooling builds for overclocking stuff. And uh, for long-term builds, we have two water cooled builds in our office for production. So Jay is probably the, the best person to ask for this, but I will give my thoughts on it. Um, hard tubing, I think, so there are obvious downsides. It's a lot harder to for us, we want to get access to the CPU if we'd like to use it later for benchmarking. So we want soft tubing for that so we can at least pull the CPU out. Uh, obvious downside of hard tubing, it's a lot harder to do that. The downside of soft tubing is that it doesn't age particularly well if it's under really high heat stress. You'll start to see it kind of like uh, softening further and it makes me a little nervous long term with high heat load how that ages. It's more, I'm not going to say likely, but uh, I would, well, I wouldn't say that like over time it's, 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 I don't want to scare people from water cooling. I don't think it's likely that it's going to cause leak issues. I think it is slightly more possible that it will with high heat stress over time, uh, as opposed to hard tubing. That's kind of my take of it. Um, you will probably have less permeation, but with open loop, it's just basically totally irrelevant. It doesn't matter. So, uh, with hard tubing, I mean, you'll have less permeation, but again, irrelevant for open loop. So that's my thinking on it. Uh, I think Jay would have a, probably a, a pretty strong opinion about it that is maybe a little bit more informed than me because I don't do too much open loop other than for overclocks. So the, those systems kind of live for like a stream and then they get t torn down. Uh, the Martin C. In before 3D Mark Hall of Fame website dies again. I had trouble loading it for a little bit there at the beginning of the stream, but it's back. Steve McGill, when do you think XY Sony replaced with the 5000s on their way? Great question. I think we'll probably see a new chipset announcement. I don't know. I feel like it's going to be after the CPU announcement. I, I don't think they'd want to take the spotlight away from the CPUs unless they have a major thing going with the chipset. But I have a feeling it'll be after the CPU announcement. We'll hear about the next chipsets, um, if that's any help. It's a couple weeks for the CPUs. Pat Miller, I have an AIO that gurgles regardless of orientation. Should I be concerned? Sounds like air bubbles. So if it's top mounted with the tubes down, then it shouldn't be making that noise unless your water level is pretty low or the pump is particularly powerful, which is just so unlikely in those AIOs. Should you be concerned? I don't know. 
I, I would check your temperatures, see how they look. It's mostly an acoustic thing, but if it's doing it even when the tubes are down and it's at the top, then that sounds like low water to me. Uh, you could try reducing the pump speed a little bit and see if that kind of, if there's just, if it's just sucking through some air that's like right at the cusp of being on top of the tubes, reducing the pump speed a couple hundred RPM might stop that. It might reduce the pressure enough that air is not getting pulled down through it. You'll lose some performance, but it will stop the noise. Um, otherwise, if you have thermal issues, then I, this is, it's a good idea generally to collect some thermal data when you first build your system and save it for later. Make sure you write down how you tested it, though. Um, but yeah, should you be concerned, I would determine that based on the thermal performance of the system. Uh, it's unlikely it's going to have a catastrophic failure, but it might stop working and need a replacement. But I don't think it's going like, to explode, most likely. Uh, very uncommon for that, to, like extremely uncommon for that to happen. Phantom du Dualum. I'm big sad that my 3950X will bottleneck on the 3090. Time to go crawling back to Intel. I, like from a 3950X though, that's such a good CPU. I, I, don't, I don't think I would jump ship same generation just for that. Um, like look, if you're gaming at 4K or something, you don't need to worry about it. Not much anyway. Buster Knees, for games I play, 3090 is only about 10% fa better uh, at double the cost. 3070 is much closer in price, I guess, to what they're looking for. Um, early thoughts, save the $200. I think you mean 3080, not 3090. So, I mean, early thoughts are, I feel like the 3770 is gonna be the mainstream card uh, for Nvidia this generation. Um, it sounds like there might be something between that and the 3080s. So, early thoughts. Emphasis on early, don't have it yet. I'm gonna say, if you're seeing only 10% better at double the cost, I'd wait. Like, I'd get something else. It sounds like bad value to me. Depending on what you have now. Uh, Wakaman, upgrading from a GTX 960, should I wait for 3070 or buy a used card of similar price? New PCs running uh, 3600X. Wow, 960, you're gonna get so much performance out of anything. Um, Similar price to the 960 would probably be whatever a 3060 is, which isn't even rumored. I don't, well, maybe, I don't think it's rumored. I haven't seen any. That doesn't mean it's not been. Um, or AMD. So if you're, if you're not like, if you don't hate your computer right now, and it's not like, it just feels like a waste of your time to use, then I would maybe wait for the RDNA 2 stuff just because someone's gonna see me scratch my face and say like, he's trying to tell us something. That's, that's body language. Uh, um, that was too. So I would maybe wait a little bit because if you're okay enough on the 960, then uh, our DNA 2 should probably have some cheaper models in that price range. So wait it out and see. Also, 3070 will be out then too. So you can look at both of them. So yeah, I'd wait for that. Uh, look at both of those. Paul Finch, do you think... Uh, NVIDIA is trying to compete with new consoles or AMD GPUs. They didn't lower the prices for fun, right? I, no, definitely not. I think they're trying to win back some favor from the 20 series botch. And uh, <laughs> people in the chat are like, he's trying to tell us something. Um, compete with new consoles. I, I don't know. Do, do $700 video cards compete with $500 boxes? I'm not sure. Greg Robertson, have you guys seen people selling paper cutouts of 39 on eBay for $1,000? I have seen the listing. I hope that none of them are actually being sold for that much. Zachary Brooks, thanks for the content. Your videos always help me stay grounded. Uh, that's good. You need a grounding strap for that normally. Just want to know if you like coffee, especially during these launches. Thanks. Uh, I, pref I, I like milk tea a lot. I started liking it from our trips to Taiwan. I'd never had it before. And Taiwan, that was like the main thing I could get the first year we went there. And uh, it's only black tea, so it's got a little bit of caffeine, but not too much. Uh, Odyssey, OG, no message. Gamer Tram, good to see you back. Says, love your channel and the quality information. Can you explain why you chose this card over others? I'm assuming they're talking about this one when we switch to this one. Um, well, the only other one I have is 3090 FE. And I wanted to put that one under LN2 for the start of the stream, which we did earlier. So this was the other one, basically. but. Uh, I was assuming it would clock pretty well. It's a high-end model, it's not guaranteed, but typically that is associated with higher clocks. 
David DiCarlo, we are at 9.30 p.m. in the Super Chats, and I said 9.39 I'd stop it, so we've got about 10 more minutes of these. David DiCarlo says, radiator exhaust or radiator intake? I uh, love the video. So, if it's for a CPU, GPUs are more thermally sensitive still, even though Ryzen's changed that a bit in TVB. Uh, generally speaking, I used to like radiator intake because it's going to be a bit colder. But uh, ultimately, it's going to be the, the min temperature is the ambient temperature, which in the case is going to be dictated by your openness to air. So if you have an airflow case, I kind of like the idea these days of radiator exhaust. Uh, just because GP is a bit more thermally sensitive, it's easier to deal with acoustic issues if it's at the top. And you blast the GPU with higher pressure fans. But it doesn't matter that much. No, not really. But that's how I would set it up, ideally. Crack on says... If the LM2 pot agrees, I'll go grab a 3080. Otherwise, I'll wait for the AMD announcement. I'm assuming you are, I think I understand what, I'm ta what you're talking about. I'm assuming you're talking about uh, one that you have now that will or will not fit. Mr. Super Duper back again says, got my wireframe mouse pad and Metro poster today. Nice. Says the blue is sick. Thoughts on shoving an FE in a Note 202. We got that question earlier. My thoughts are, uh, I think it would you'd probably be running a little bit higher fan speeds to cope with it. That's kind of my thoughts right now. Austin Hansen, it might move air through the case better though. That'd be interesting. Uh, Austin Hansen, no message. Hector Santana, uh, energy Sains back. Hector Santana says Steve brought Andrew was on a Q and A once. Oh, okay. So Steve brought Andrew on once for a Q and A to explain ray tracing or something graphics related. Uh, any any chance? We'll get more videos on graphics from him. We're kind of working on some stuff right now for the 3090s. So we might have some more stuff for you uh, that Andrew's been working on in Unreal Engine. Um, so 3090 review, I said we wanted to come back for 3D art and game engine type stuff. That's what we're working on. Andrew's been putting that together. So uh, any chance? Yes, definitely. Chicken 7 Sandwich says just because. I hate your name because I'm hungry. Steve Reed says, why did you reconnect that awful RGB strip when assembling the FTW3 card? It's funny you say that. I almost disconnected this thing because I was like, maybe I'll get an extra two watts for overclocking. Uh, but then people liked it, I guess, so we left it in. Odyssey OG, Jacob from EVGA posted about the caps on Twitter. Yes, got that, read it earlier on, on stream, he called me. Matthew Humphrey, uh, Love your vids, first time catching live. Got the Pure Base 500 DX because of the review. And then it says, if you cut your haircut, do you lose your tech powers? I, I, don't, I don't know, I haven't tried. 500 DX is a very good case. Uh, uh, it, it's performed comparably to the other high-end airflow cases. I was really impressed with Be Quiet's move on that because the 500 was just like, eh, it, it was, didn't impress us. So 500 DX is cool. Point forward says, will you be doing 21 by 9 benchmarks in the future? We've looked at it, but no current um, framework for it. Blood Spiller Gaming says, Jacob is going to send him a production card. I tell fortunes. Yes, that is what he's going to do. Fan24, DRR, just noticed this was happening, left the WAN show. Love you guys, keep it up. Rip J, this was at 9.35, it's 11.23 now, but we are four minutes away from the end of the Super Chats when I cut them off. Uh, don't send any more that you want to be answered. I won't be answering them. Uh, sorry about that, but we've got the message on the screen. Uh, Dwayne... Aki says, hello from Singapore. Hello, like I said earlier, cool to see people. We had someone from Brazil earlier too. I'm building a two system, one tower with Fantax and through Lux 2. Will I be able to fit a three slot GPU on both the ATX and the ITX board? I don't think you'll, maybe. I have the M2 Pro 2 over there. I don't think it's the M2 Lux 2. Um, I th don't, th I want to say no. Uh, I'm not positive. I want to say no. The Pro 2 I'm looking at is like a maybe territory. Um, email Fantex though. I, I bet they'll answer you. They're pretty good with getting those questions answered. Brian Neese. I appreciate the hell of what you do. Keep the good work. You take quality seriously. Uh, Gamers access equals quality. That's what we're trying to do. Um, I want to keep investing in like the testing equipment too. So we're, we're trying to make sure we keep that standard as the the operation grows. Because I know people are always like, as you get more subs, don't move away from what you do. So we're, we're not going to. Is the top OC better? This is at 938. So we're almost there. 
Tough OC better than regular tough. Just hit confirmation on the 39 tough not OC. And I am curious if I should keep or swap for the OC. So I don't have both. I don't have any 3090 Aces cards. But uh, generally speaking, the, over, the OC versus non difference is not huge. You're, maybe it's useful for like competitive stuff. But for out of box usage, it's, you're not losing a lot. Uh, you're within like 1%, 2% on these cards. I wouldn't worry about it. Uh, name I can't read. I think it's in Cyrillic. says, is it possible 550 watt PSU isn't enough for 2700X, 2080, causing instability with DOCP on 3600? Oh, megahertz for the RAM. Um, 2700X and 2080 should be barely OK, I think. Top of my head, I'd have to look up the 2080 in our review for the power consumption. Uh, I think you should be okay, unless you're overclocking the 2700X. You're, you're borderline, but I, I don't know. Maybe the quality of the power supply is not good. More likely, you're saying cause instability with the profile in the RAM. I would say that's more suspect. Try manually increasing some of the timings a little bit. Um, Elman, a guy. Uh, uh, oh, wait. Let's see. Kyle Devine. Oh, these are at 944. Okay. All right. So we are done at this point um yes so i'm just trying to see if there's any i definitely should answer we are at the point where we've got gotten caught up with all the ones i said i would answer uh i've shown the back of the caps on the ftw3 okay someone saying is it yes to your edt it's the time on the east coast uh, all right, so we're going to stop there. Like I, I have the cutout on the screen. Um, like I said in the past, we're at, at a point now where we can't answer every single Super Chat anymore. I apologize for that, but I mean, I just stood here for like over an hour to Super Chat, so I hope that is okay with you. If I did not get to yours, I'm sorry. We do have to call it at some point, though, because got, I've got a lot of work to do before end of night. So, yeah, score for Port Royal was good. We're very happy with the 14,394 results, I think is what I ended up with. And I'll upload that. Puts us right behind Jay or very close to it. And we'll have to come back with some more exotic cooling later. So uh, that's it for this one. Thank you for watching. As always, you can subscribe for more. And we'll see you all next time.